Juggles and Jugglets. It is Mohi Talk episode 17, the worst year load on the internet, or maybe I should say season 2, episode 3. Because um, a lot of a lot has changed between uh, episode 14 and 15, which still haven't been released yet because I'm really slow at uh, editing. But anyway, today we are receiving a guest uh, that is the admin of the legendary page. Sad screenshots taken out of context. Uh, hello, mate. How are you? Great, you flatter me. You definitely. <laughs> oh, I don't think I deserve that intro, but yeah, nice to be here. Okay, so what intro do you think you deserve? Introduce yourself. Um, oh god, my name's Justin. Uh, yes, I have a page. Sad screenshots taken out of context, but just like anyone else, I'm just a guy that likes memes and shares them with the world. So yeah, that's the intro I need. Okay, perfect. Uh, so let's dive right in. What is your favorite meme of the moment? Of, the of 2019. Of 2019. God. Let's say 2019. Um, shit. I should have prepared for this truly because I listened to a couple of your other ones and you asked the exact same question, so I knew it was coming. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Last night I got drunk with a couple of friends and we went on the 420chan board jank, which is the most, uh, God, degenerate thing about it. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's when people get high allegedly from inhaling shit and these people, these people that are very literate. I don't know why they're spending their time and effort on this, but on this board, they just talk about the concept of inhaling shit and getting high from it. And it's so funny. It shouldn't be, but it is just so hilarious. And that is yeah, currently the meme that I'm into. Uh, they're inhaling actual shit or you say shit? Allegedly. Okay. Yes, allegedly that's it. They just collect it. They, yeah, they collect it in a, I don't know, they collect it in like little pots or something, leave it that's... to ferment. I'm, I'm not really sure, but whatever they, it is. It's... Do they dry it first or are they just like inhaling wet shit up their nostrils? Well, that's it. They go into such incredible detail. They talk about how you're supposed to, you know, keep it wet each day, spray some water on it to keep the fermentation process. Like they go well, so, so in depth and they waste so much time. And these people are clearly like, you know, they're not dumb, they're, they're literate, they're well-spoken, <laughs> but this is what they're choosing to spend their time on, and I think that's what makes it so funny, truly. Is this, is this how flat earthers get high? Probably, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm, I'm certain. <laughs> Because I mean, they have to be that high, like, you know. Seems like there would be some crossover there between the people that get high off of fermented um, yes. excretions <laughs> and the people and that believe in thing. flat yeah. earth and get in their own little... little uh, world where they're talking in a lot of detail about it with each other and mm -hmm. you know, it would explain it's, a it's lot ringing it a bell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as loath as I am to admit it, that is just what tickles my fancy at the moment. Yeah, that sounds like something you would see in a South Park episode, not real life. Yep. I have yep. never heard of this before. And actually, I'm, actually I'm the concept right does now. get referenced in a South Park episode, the one where uh, they get high off cat piss, they actually talk yes. about that very concept. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Yeah. A cheesing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, God. Gotta try this once. Um, <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> once you start posting Flat Earth memes on your page, I'll know it's happened. I mean... Yeah. Are, are you gonna get, like, pink eye in your nostril? If you do that, you're... You're lucky this is a podcast and not a live stream with a face cam, because I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Pink, pink nose. Pink Maybe. nose, yeah. You're, you're, no, your nostrils are gonna get inflamed and pink and like start oozing and that like that's immediately the first thing that I think of. So if these if these people are really snorting um poo poo, they mm -hmm. should post pictures of their of their noses to prove it. Oh, yeah, they, absolutely. they actually snort it? I thought they were just smelling it. Oh, I think, I think, yeah, I think they like inhale the gases. So yeah, again, I don't, oh, <laughs> I don't want to act I like I'm the doing... expert here. I thought they were doing lines. Of no, it. thank God. That's, that's way too degenerate. Just inhaling the gases is where it's at. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, that's that's where my mind immediately went. I'm, a, I'm, I'm sorry a that your season two of this podcast is about this. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you asked, and I've been truthful. Yeah, 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 yeah. The new meme, inhaling mm -hmm. shit, you know? Yeah, 2019. There was, the, there was the blue waffle, and now we have the pink nose. Yes, yeah. The new generation's uh, blue waffle. It's the, it's the cycle. Uh, <laughs> so, what is your favorite meme of all time? All time. Oh, you know what? You know what I love? Dolan Duck. Do you remember Dolan Duck? Dolan and yes. Gooby and all those? I love uh, those. Yes. 
early high school, that just was the funniest thing ever. Just the shitty drawing and just, uh, gooby, please. That, I wish that would make a resurgence. In fact, I'm probably just going to use my page for the next week posting those memes. You've encouraged me here. Yeah, excellent idea. Uh, did you see the weird spin-off that was made in Brazil because the, the the weird the Donald thing was, was from mm. Finland I'm sure yeah. you know that but there was a spin-off that was made in Brazil and there was always the same punchline is that uh, something <laughs> was di was destroyed in a month like for Trust example Brazil. for example uh, there's uh, one comic that I really loved where uh, Donald uh, goes to I mean Donald goes to uh, the Apple store and um, ev everything is expensive so uh, he gives cancer to Steve Jobs, and Apple was bankrupted after one month. <laughs> and it's well, yeah, trust Brazil to come up with just a shitty knockoff of anything, truly. But if no one's going to come to Brazil, they'll bring it to Brazil themselves. I think that if you go to the Dolan page and scroll a little on the uh, images on Know Your Meme, you'll find yeah. them, because I uploaded them. I'm going to. Thank you. Was, Thank you. <laughs> at, at some point, I was... I, I looked for this meme, you know, Google, Bing, etc. Mm -hmm. I tried mm -hmm. a lot of search terms, but I uh, I didn't remember. I, I mean, I didn't find any of it. So I thought uh, maybe it was a, a hallucination that I had, and this meme never existed. But <laughs> I was You're really glad. Do it yourself. <laughs> I was really glad after a while to find the, the stuff that I had downloaded on uh, some kind of. Uh, USB thumb drive. Yeah, your back hard drive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so many old memes on there from like 10 years ago. Obscure stuff like the one I talked about in a, in a video recently called the um, mm -hmm. uh, the Musically Challenged Squid. And um, yeah, that was something. Okay, so I'm what's glad to know, I'm glad to know that when the apocalypse happens, someone's going to find your little hard drive of all these obscure memes. And they'll, you know, historians yeah. will study this to see just what we were into. I mean, no, I think, Nelson, how how much data worth of memes do you think you have saved on your personal hard drives? Uh, I mean, there's usually very small pictures. I mean, um, you know, they uh, they have a small file size, so uh, I um, I could give you a number, but in in gigabytes, it's maybe one. Uh, but okay. uh, <laughs> these are rookie numbers, <laughs> <I'm> truly. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I was just thinking. Of all people that I know of, you may have the you biggest know, collection. Uh, in the biggest collection. It's, it still might, might not be a whole, a whole I mean, lot don't, of you, don't you find your gallery work? just builds up? You know, you have the original meme, and then you have the cropped version, and then you have all these other, you know, just shitty ones. It just adds to your yeah. gallery. Like, you turn around, suddenly there's 10,000 images in there, and you just don't know what happened. But, well, yeah, the I collection's keep, I keep, build. I keep losing phones. I keep having computers breaking, so I don't really have that. Like, I don't bother to back up any of my memes, but... Uh, I think I think all of the great meme lords out there should get together and make a meme a digital meme museum meme that hub, people can yeah. walk through. Yeah, go you know go through the the decades and stuff and have like little you know like the the virtual version of those little placards with the the artist name. Imagine and the that materials. a VR museum of just all the great memes. I think that would be pretty sick. Yeah, I want, yeah, I want yeah. that. Well, I want that we, a lot. we 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 got to we got to make this we got to make this happen. Um, okay. I was thinking because you, you you said numbers and stuff, and um, recently I did um, a backup of the memes I had on my phone, and um, I, I backed up the memes I had downloaded and used in January and February, two months worth uh, of memes, and there were already more than ten thousand for two months. Oh, right. <laughs> so in nice. terms of in terms of uh, you know file size, because most of them are only a few kilobytes. It's really small. This may be one or two gigabytes, but there mm. may be up to a million of memes in my uh, hard drives and uh, all that. You should yeah, do what Shitpostbot should... does and just have you know the best of each month of the memes that you've saved. You should start yeah. releasing that. I've 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 been thinking about this for years, but it seems like so much work. True. But uh, <laughs> I, I, it's I've a tried. thankless job. <laughs> I've tried. Actually, I um, I want to do this on. I started to do this on Pinterest. I'm making a Pinterest uh, for memes where I, where I class them by uh, vague categories like cursed mm -hmm. images and uh, rage comics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, uh, yeah, but there's already no your meme. So true. Is there any following uh, on Pinterest? Is that even a thing? I thought it was what? just weird artsy, like people go on wedding. Oh, sorry, they go on Pinterest for like wedding inspiration. I didn't know Pinterest even had a meme following. 
Uh, well, it's very small, uh, but there's uh, there's some in Pinterest. There's pretty much there's everything. If you look uh, uh, like uh, if you take enough time to look in the dark corners, there's <laughs> pretty much there's pretty much all the shit that you can uh, find. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff. I used it uh, really a lot for um, cooking recipes because there's a lot of uh, a kitchen stuff on, on there and. Oh. Um, and uh yeah there's also a lot of um inspiration for design art etc and uh and also there's a lot of weird shit like 3d porn that <laughs> seems to have yeah. been made uh, that doesn't even sound so, that weird i'm sure you could have come up with something significantly weirder than 3d porn that just sounds like real porn yeah yeah uh, um, i mean there's um there's something that i discovered recently uh is there's a whole subculture for 3d porn that has been made in Second Life, you know. There's, oh, a, yes, there's yeah. a huge kinky community in Second Life, which I didn't even know Second Life was still, you know, around because it has been kicking around for like what, 12, 20 years, maybe. <laughs> And, you know, uh, you, you don't know that the people are playing Second Life because they're just in Second Life and they're not anywhere else. They're just living full time in Second Life, yeah. so they're not they're not out there talking about it anymore. They're just yeah, what, have you seen that meme confused. where it's like uh, it's this guy that's just in a loincloth and there's these two people having sex in Second Life and they're telling him to go away. I can't remember the specifics of it. But I, can't, yeah. I can just remember this hilarious photo of that. Uh, it's I so remember, funny. I remember that, and uh, I think one of those has uh, like a weird, a huge. Head or uh, I mean I've seen so I've seen so many weird Second Life shit recently. I, maybe there's like um, when World of Warcraft started coming back, there's been a wave of nostalgia, and a lot of people are mm-hmm. uh, playing again all these games from 15, 20 years ago. You know, there's um, the Min- Minecraft revival. There's uh, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, RuneScape never really stopped being somewhat sure. popular, but. Yeah. You know, um, I've seen a lot of weird shit in Second Life lately. Uh, I think it was um, Eric Big Money Salvia that made a video where uh, he just fucked around in Second Life with. Uh, he was like a this huge Hillary Clinton head uh, with tiny legs, and uh, or it may have been Roblox or uh, something else. Uh, what was that weird one. shit with um, Ugandan knuckles? Um, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. VR, yeah, VR actually, chat. Yeah, VR chat. Yeah, VR chat. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Gold. So gold, it, gold. it may have. It might have been this one. I, I'm. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like really recently, like maybe a couple of weeks ago, I discovered this whole kinky second life uh, subculture. Like that was fucking around on Fit Life. Uh, looking for nothing special and it's okay you don't have to yeah. justify yourself <laughs> so so pinterest it's not just good for decorating wedding um and fashion and cooking ideas there's unless a lot more a, to it unless that. it's a second life themed wedding in which case <laughs> a second life porn <laughs> wedding for right. some very sad people <laughs> well um the way you turn that phrase is not, you know pinterest is not really good for anything there's some mostly <laughs> It's mostly trash. Used for a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's be let's be honest. It's mostly trash. But they're it's really like you're good. describing my page right now. <laughs> they're uh, really, really good at SEO for some reason. That's why when mm-hmm. you look up for uh, images on like Google Images or whatever, there's a lot they're of top, Pinterest yeah. stuff that uh, you know they're kind of the, the new. Uh, what was that shit that was used a lot ten years ago? Uh, Not their logo was a little heart, um, uh, and uh, it was it was kind of like Pinterest. It was kind of like the um, the missing link between all the shit, like Yellow Frog <laughs> and all that, you know, from the, really pr- the proto Pinterest. Yeah, and um, you know, uh, I think it was called Image Fave, something like that, and uh, it was a lot of. Um, it was kind of like Pinterest was a place where people linked or um, usually hot linked their favorite images, but for some reason they were all really tiny because I think it was made, <laughs> uh, you know, um, at, at a time where 
compressed broadband everything was not exactly broadband was not exactly um, widespread at the time or it was it was made uh, by people who uh, were a little you know late on the technology train and uh, it's so so weird because all the people all the pictures are really really tiny uh like 100 by 100 pixels and uh, yeah um it was um very criticized at the time because uh it um it removed automatically the source of the picture so if you want if you wanted to see more or if you want to see info or like the name of the artist or or whatever uh it was basically impossible and uh that that would that was synced to the thing because uh everyone hated that and um pinterest kind of took the the opposite way their pinterest is a lot like reddit um but somehow even worse because you know, <laughs> Reddit is pretty. Uh, Reddit's pretty trash, but there's some. I'm glad, some I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> I, just, uh, <laughs> I was wary too, in case you guys were hard into it. But no, I didn't. Oh, I mean, I use it quite often because there's a few subreddits. You know, if mm. you if you sift through the shit, there's a few gold nuggets hidden mm. here and there. So, uh, and and Pinterest is 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 like that, but there's much more shit and uh, gold nuggets are more fewer and far in between. Uh, it's, mm-hmm. You can really spend a lot of time on there to find anything. But the big difference that can make Pinterest better than Reddit is the search uh, optimization. Because if you were looking for something on Reddit, good fucking luck. The search function <laughs> has always been horrible. So is that why you only tag things like cursed images? You don't actually go in depth because there's no point? Or... <laughs> Well, it's um, nobody really understand how the search function works on Reddit because when you type uh, any word, it seems to um, give you mostly results of things that are vaguely related to this instead of things that are you know have this word in their title or I, I know, you know I've been so trying. Is this is this yeah? searching in Reddit search tool? Yeah. Because I find I find a lot of stuff specific to the topic I want on Reddit when I search in Google. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that may be when I'm looking for the straight dope on a situation. I go yeah. to Google and find the Reddit what redditors had to say about it, and then I get I get to the bottom of things. Because you need well, their input on every subject. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. If, if, I, if I'm actually going to make any money driving for favor or something like that, there's like a, there's a thousand people on Reddit who That's have true. like have given. That's the, what the internet's the great for. Is everyone is just everyone's done it. You know, you will find someone yeah. who's done whatever you're yeah. interested in knowing about on the internet. It's beautiful. But there's like there's so much fake information put out there by the corporations that are interested in it. So th- usually, if you find a Reddit, uh, you know, topic on that, then you have a bunch of real people that have their experiences kind of aggregated there together. Yeah. That's well, let's be real. We're not, we're not that boomers. We're pretty good at sifting through <laughs> the fake news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we don't always have the time, you know, because it takes time. And um, mm-hmm. that's why, that, that's the one reason why I, I love going on Reddit, despite all the shit that's going on there. Uh, it's They're really, really, really good at fact-checking. That's their main talent. And uh, mm-hmm. so when there's some news of something and it smells fishy, I look up, I look it up on Reddit and often there, you will see in comments people with uh, good argumentations and links to uh, actual studies and facts Damn. that will explain if it's, if it, that's the best thing about Reddit. Uh, that's maybe the one really good thing about Reddit. It's that there's really, really good at fact checking and uh, being unbiased. Especially, if- especially on the small subreddits, because the big subreddits tend to be biased because there are, um, of course, yeah. the, there's always moderators that become too powerful. Vested interest, yeah, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that only <laughs> started just recently, but... left and right. <laughs> but yeah, I know, exactly. I don't know if yeah. your page has been hit with it on Facebook yet, but I've had memes that have been deleted, and the reason they give me is this is like fake news. You're spreading fake information, but I don't know why they don't have a system where it's. I'm not trying to be a legitimate news site i'm just sharing i'm just shit posting like why is that something that's going to be here as if i'm trying to spread news it uh, happened to me Facebook. recently on my political page uh and it was it was re- kind of weird because it was a weird um 
you know, it was a weird Trump meme that made fun yeah. of Trump, you know, when he was in Italy, uh, he yeah. said mozzarella. Uh, and um, that's, the exact, that's the exact one that I posted. That is exactly it. And it's uh, anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's so maybe, yeah. maybe this one specifically was targeted uh, by Trump uh, fans. I don't know. True. But, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, I, I sent two emails to Facebook, one inside uh, the, the, the Facebook help center and one yeah. inside the um, uh, support inbox. Mm -hmm. And I told them, uh, my page is satire and comedy. It's not yeah. supposed to be a news exactly. outlet. I post whatever random shit all the time because it's clearly jokes. Uh, yeah. So can you please remove it. your it community makes strike? It makes sense it's to still hold there. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense to hold news pages and like politicians accountable for what they say because they have, you know, that's yeah, they should be accountable for what they say. But just for yeah. us low tier memers, it shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not, it seems like they're not doing a good job of parsing out the difference between a spoof and a a news source is trying to pass itself off as legitimate. Yeah. They are horrible at this. Mm -hmm. uh, in the community guidelines on Facebook, they say that, uh, um, I mean, there's a lot, but I remember that, uh, you know, uh, things that are racist or mis misogynistic or stuff like this are, um, you know, f forbidden, except if it's clearly a, a joke or comedy, uh, then it's, then it should be allowed. Uh, but they, they never, and uh, they, they never enforce it like that. You know, uh, even, even if you're joking, um, even if you're not insulting someone, I remember at, a uh, uh, um, few years ago, there was this, uh, glaring example of some dude, uh, the gay guy who said, Oh, t today in the street, uh, there's uh, someone who called me a faggot that was not nice. Uh, uh, and he was banned because he used the term faggot, which is, uh, yeah. you know, prohibited on Facebook, even if he, you know, he wasn't he insulting anyone yeah. and he was yeah. himself gay. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's crazy, but there are uh, really, really tone death. it's like, yeah, it's, <laughs> 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 it's like there are, um, Autistic, or yes. um, some, sometimes it feels like you're being moderated by robots because it's it can happen like really really fast and you know um, now it has been going on for one or two years that you can appeal the decisions if you have a good reason you say no this was done by mistake uh, please uh, unban me or and I've appealed pretty much every time I've been um, you know. Uh, Zakinid and <laughs> nine times out of ten, I won my appeal. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Is like if their so, initial system is so flawed that they're you know forgiving nine times out of ten, that they should be looking back at the the system yeah. what led to that in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. But, but uh, it's such a big, you know, machine. It's such a big gas factory, you know, uh, that it's. Uh, Facebook has always been full of bugs and incoherent stuff because it's um, it's like a jigsaw puzzle that has been... It's like a patchwork, you know? There's yeah. so much stuff in there. That's why you have to download several apps if you want to use Facebook. One for messages, one for your timeline, one for pages. At some yeah. point, there was there was even one for groups that has disappeared now. There's now it. one for analytics and business. And, um, you know, and oh, the page, man, I, I, I'm sure you use it every day but the pages yeah. manager app can be really really slow like Truly. i remember like in 2015 the, uh, yeah i was just gonna say like i mean the inbox like it just doesn't refresh you know like you miss uh, 100 messages and then suddenly I, 24 hours later you get them in and it's, it's, you're trying to hold a conversation but you aren't seeing messages other yours aren't sending it's it's horrible i hate the page inbox uh do you remember like for a couple of years when someone sent you uh, a video or even a link to a video you couldn't watch it it was uh, mm -hmm. the, pl yeah. the, the playback was uh, failed all the time uh, yeah. recently recently now uh, people can not send you images unless you already started having a conversation with them for mm -hmm. some obscure reason and uh also it, i don't know how often you go in your spam folder but there's a lot of messages that end there that are not spam that are people and trying to reach you spam that ends up in the real inbox <laughs> yeah 
fuck yeah. And uh, I mean, it's a, it's a mess, especially inbox is a mess. But, you know, I remember uh, when I first started using the Pages Manager app, it was in late 2015. And when you, when you tapped on the uh, app icon on your phone, the app took about two minutes to start. Yeah. God, that I forgot about that, that, but you're absolutely right. That was horrible. And because, I remember, because I'm, yeah. I'm signed in on my Facebook, on my personal account, and then on my pages manager on my alt. So, like, when that was all broken, mm-hmm. I didn't want to be on my alt on my Facebook because I wanted to use it for myself, but I had to because yeah. it was just so broken and so useless. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had the same problem for a while. It's, um, it's a fucking mess. I remember uh, when I first started being on Facebook regularly was in 2007, 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, all the time, something broke. And you had uh, this little message that says, uh, oh, there are still a few kinks on Facebook and the developers mm-hmm. are trying to iron them out uh, as fast as possible. Please be patient. And, uh, you know, <laughs> now there's just things keep They don't breaking. even put up that pretense. They just, yeah, no. just ignore no, you. No, no. Sometimes it's, too, it's, it's too big it's too out of control it's like mm-hmm. everybody on earth is on facebook how can you possibly you know manage all of it yeah of course but sometimes it really feels like facebook is run by two people in a garage or like or two like Indian a, dudes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah or like I, a lot of people but really lazy who never do any work i don't know well, I, mean, I was I gonna say about that, the <laughs> I was going to say about the moderating thing. I, I was reading some article some time back that all, like a lot of the images get that get reported as um, graphic and and possibly containing <laughs> containing child porn, etc. They they have a bunch of human moderators in like Southeast Asia that they send all of that to. So the, the article was like, oh, these these poor people in Southeast Asia that are just like forced to like look at tons and tons of like these. I think I read that too. Like, it came from yeah. the perspective that they haven't been offered psychological help or something, and they were really yeah, damaged by what exactly. they saw. Exactly. But then, so then they it turns be, out. Huh? Sorry, keep going. What? Oh yeah, they may they may be exporting like a lot of the, these things to people mm-hmm. in other countries that don't understand western humor cultural context yeah, you know true. maybe maybe english yeah. isn't their first their first language so they just they just kind of you know are given given these really specific set of guidelines so you know it, it almost literally is run by this autistic entity true. of like people people that are tra- you know have the have the human eyeballs to sort of see a little more than a, than a than an ai necessarily can like an ai flags it then humans have to double check it but these humans may not get uh, All things the subtle things and whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, if you asked me my favorite meme a couple of weeks ago, it would have been that the fact all those nine eleven ones that just got blocked as uh, you know you had to click <laughs> to see them. Just the most obscure yeah. things. I didn't even know how they made a system that could pick up that it was nine eleven related. I, I don't, but that was that was hilarious. <laughs> I loved that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's. Uh... And even the the image was blurred, and it was just a drawing of uh, <laughs> a, a plane. It was blocked. It was. Uh, I mean, <laughs> like the battery of, they're on airplane mode, and it was nine eleven like AM or something, and that gets <laughs> yes. blocked. Like it's, yeah. it's just yeah. perfect. I, I well, liked all the Thanos related ones that got blocked too. Like like Thanos <laughs> obliterates the the or Th- Thanos is Christopher Col- Columbus who obliter- <laughs> obliterates the uh, Native Americans. That was yeah, that was cool. blocked. And, and the classic duck with his head on fire that that holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yes. It's not even on fire. The fire is in the background. Yeah, it's yeah, a perfect yeah. effect. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or the. Do you remember at some point when you posted a picture with a Snapchat dog filter, you got automatically <gasps> banned yes. and the image was removed? And it was like yeah. that for months. And it was, was so that filter? really recently that GIF that if people would search it, like it was the first GIF for something. And if they posted it, they instantly got a comment post block. Did you have oh, that? Yeah. I remember posting that and it was like, haha, everyone should do this. And then everyone did. And it was just a whole con. Uh, the comment section was just empty comments because everyone had just yes. been like blocked. That was yeah, good. I remember. That was really weird. I mean, f- Facebook is weird as shit. And we never really understand. That's the worst thing about Facebook. We never really understand what's going on, what mm-hmm. they want, what's yeah. the. Also, to, to go back to the um, discussion about the moderators, um, usually. I, maybe that has changed, but I remember reading in an article about two or three years ago that the moderators had less than 10 seconds 
uh, to judge if an image was, um, you know, available, uh, 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 authorized, <laughs> I mean, uh, permitted or, yeah. uh, or, of, or, of, or offending the, the rules. And because uh, there, there were like a really small number of them. But they had millions of images to review every day. So yeah, yeah sometimes they had only five seconds to uh, to see. And uh, uh, apparently, a lot of them, you know, just push the buttons at, at random. Yeah, and, and uh, I get that sometimes something I post is maybe borderline, but never so bad that it's actually, you know, like you do see gore on Facebook. There's all that, and they put like a blur on it, but they don't remove it. And then I just yeah. post this like a dumb meme that I didn't even give two seconds thought about and then i suddenly see that my whole page has been deleted because of it and it makes no sense yeah yeah it's it's uh it's weird and um i remember not long ago uh it was in early 2019 it was in during the spring i called someone a retard in comments <laughs> and i got like blocked sure for that <laughs> and said that that's uh yeah absolutely they did well, they but that was really weird that's, where, that's where why you've got to say rot now. R A R T. That's the way to go. Rot, rot. Yeah. So rots. It's just instead of saying retards, you say rots. Oh. Rot. But then people think you're talking about your actual rats. That's true. Nelson. Yeah. yeah. You, you have so many true. rats. They think you uh, and misspelled it. I have a question for our guest. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So um, you know your your page is called said screenshots taken out of context mm -hmm. and um i'm just really entranced by this image here of, of like a, it looks like a baby girl with um with a dollop of sour cream on her oh, head yeah. and then and then <laughs> oh, and then classic. and then somebody's eating eating um the sour the cream with the yeah. chip yeah what was what was the what was the context for that um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. And I did actually just found that in my gallery when I was going through my 10,000 plus images and it was hilarious. And my girl, my, sorry, God, weird Freudian slip. My sister recently had a baby girl. I know, God, Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry. I'm not linking her to this podcast. That's for sure. Uh, anyway, my sister recently had a little baby girl. And so I sent her the meme and I was like, ah, oh, this would be funny to post on the page. So I don't know the context, but it made me laugh. And that's why I posted it. And, you know, okay. I've got, that happens for, you could go down my page, there'll be a hundred things I've posted that aren't sad screenshots taken out of context, and there will be people on the page that will call me out on it, but it's, it made me laugh, and it makes people laugh, so I post it anyway. So you yeah. don't, you don't necessarily know the original context. It was taken out of context at some point, but you yeah. aren't necessarily the person who took it out of context. No. And I mean, there's a lot of time okay. I do like people will send me conversations and I'll clip it down to like, you know, one message and then a reply. And so I know the context and I made it contextless, yeah. but in that case, no, that wasn't me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool to kind of guess at the context. Like, yeah. how did they drop drop That's, sour cream on the baby's head? You I know? think. And like, I've had many years now. It's been like going on five, maybe even six years of adminning this page. I think five. Uh, I think that's what made this page so good. Is that like when it was mostly truly sad screenshots taken out of context it, because it didn't have context. People apply their own context and. When mm -hmm. it may have been specifically about one thing, suddenly 10 people with entirely different stories all relate to it, even though originally they wouldn't have. And yeah, I think that's what made this page so successful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you can get good conversations going on in comments, then uh, that's the lifeblood of the of a, of a good page. And I think, again, like on top of that as well, is that I've always been active in the comments. Like I'm always willing to interact with fans or yeah. people on the page. And that, yeah, that builds a community around it. Like there's people... I see someone comment. I'm like, damn, I recognize that name from two years ago. And suddenly we had a little chat, you know, like it is a community now. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That happens to me all the time. It's really, this is really community building. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You said it very well. And, uh, I, um, you know, <laughs> I've had this, uh, this idea, this desire to, um, make like videos where I read the funniest comments or what that I, that I really love. And, um, you know, it's, it, I haven't been uh, able to do it in the past cause lack of organization and, um, mm -hmm. being really not good at, uh, scripting videos, but uh, I yeah. really, really want to do this. I briefly and, delved into YouTube and made like three or four very low quality videos and they only got views because I shared them on the page, but I agreed time was not on my side. And so it was not something I could actively pursue, but it could be fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, especially since uh, now Facebook videos, uh, they work really well. They're, they have great exposure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I, 
I, my YouTube channel is really small, but when I post a video, uh, usually I post on, on Facebook and YouTube at the same time, and the thing will get like a hundred views on YouTube, and it will get yeah. ten thousand on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So um, watch out because any moment that can change, and suddenly you'll be getting five views on Facebook just because that will have changed something in the system, like they always do. Yeah. Well, don't they want to prioritize like content that's hosted on their own site though? I thought they always want to, they want to spread the reach farther. That's true. Like if you post yes. a YouTube yeah. link, it's going to reach two people just because their algorithm says, Hey, that's not Facebook. It yeah. has, they don't, it they has don't want you going now. off offline somewhere else, getting swimming around on YouTube, you know, getting lost. They're You'd like, think if that Facebook. was a rainbow, they would make Facebook an actually good website, but clearly not. So it's, uh, <laughs> I observed that it was changing lately because um, I've been posting YouTube videos on Facebook for a really long time, and it was always, you know, uh, the reach was always abysmal, and uh, it has changed recently. Uh, the YouTube links are getting a much better reach. I think there's a thing that allows the YouTube player to play within Facebook instead of going on outside of it, and that's why they're not penalizing it so much. That makes sense. But yeah. I've, no- I've noticed really uh, in the past few months, it started really recently, uh, and probably in, during the summer, uh, a lot of more um, videos on YouTube links whether it's my channel or something else, um, rather uh, c- c- compared to uh, even uh, early 2019 or, uh, or before. So, these these um, are such basic features, though. They should have had, like, video embedding from the early days. I don't understand why we're, like, we're like, yeah, you go Facebook in 2019 for embedding a YouTube video. It's, God, they're so behind. Well, I, because, I remember... Uh, <laughs> oh. I remember oh, when YouTube video, w- there was a period where YouTube videos were automatically embedded and then they stopped. And I figured that was some sort of Facebook YouTube rivalry or, or Facebook Google rivalry where they didn't want, um, you know, so much attention yeah. going to the YouTube videos or YouTube, YouTube didn't say d- YouTube didn't want, you know, mm-hmm. Facebook profiting off of their content without people having to go get, yeah. get lost over in YouTube. I don't know, but yeah, there Even was a brief ultimately- period where... It's the user's content. We're the ones making it and driving it. And that's what's frustrating about Facebook. You know, we spend the time with these communities making it, which encourages more people to use Facebook, but they're not willing to support the creators even slightly. So, you know, they're all talking about, yeah, we want the profit, we want blah, 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 but they won't support the users. Yeah. What about the users? Well, 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 um... I think it's not very true when it comes to Facebook, or, or maybe I'm having a wrong understanding of the conversation, but it seems to me that uh, Facebook is, is great for, um, you know, getting rich. And, uh, as long as you stay on Facebook um, for, for getting discovered and uh, building a community, it's much better than any other social network. And um, I think a lot of stuff that we, um, that we impute to uh Malice or malevolence is just mostly incompetence, and uh, sure. it's. I don't. I don't know if you've played the video game Portal, such a yep. classic. But you know, at some point, you know, at the, in the beginning of the game, everything is real pretty, and uh, at some point, you go behind the decor and you realize it. it's yep. all fucking crumbling down. And, uh, <laughs> that, that's fa- Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is like Facebook is obviously like that. You yeah. know, there's a there's a nice facade, but behind it, the walls are completely rotten and crumbling, and, uh, and that's full true. of maggots. And for most everyday Facebook users, it is this nice website where you can interact with family and friends, mm-hmm. and everything's sunshine and butterflies. But when you are on it every day and you're trying to create content, and you know, with a page of six hundred thousand likes, you post something and it reaches two people, like that sort of thing is just so frustrating. But most people <laughs> won't have that experience. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and every month there's a new bug. Like, for example, during uh, October, or or was it September? It was recently uh, when I posted a new shirt or whatever to my uh, Facebook store. Uh, mm-hmm. It got shared several times on the page, like two or three times in a row. Yeah. And people are and people were like, "Why are you posting your link?" I didn't post a link. Yeah. Facebook did this. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's like the top fans. Nobody understand what it how it works 
Yeah. And so many people are laboring under the impression that it's, you know, the page admins that decide yeah, that's who's it. the top every fan time, or not. Every time. It's, 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 what is it, the first so day weird. of the week or something? Like, I notice that it's, it's weekly. Yeah. It's suddenly with yeah. certain posts. Everyone will be like, why am I top fan? Why did I get this badge? And for a lot of people, I just remove their top fan badge because I actually have that power, but I don't have the power to give it in the first place, and people don't understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I do is that I, uh, I deactivate the badge most of True. the time. Mm. And once in a while, I activate it, uh, you know, where, uh, cause <laughs> often there's a lot of people when you start activating the top fan badge, there's, well, there's a few categories. There are the people who are like, why didn't you give me a badge? Uh, I've been a fan for a long time. I deserve it. Uh, why yeah. are you being such a Nazi and you know, whatnot? There's a lot of people who are like, oh, thank for the badge. This is just so nice. Uh, I feel, I, I feel, feel so proud. honored. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, probably yeah. don't have this one, but because of my page, like because it's sad screenshots taken out of context, at the same time, weekly, I'll get a flood of inboxes where people have screenshotted the notification that there are top fan and every single one of them will say haha this is the real sad screenshot and i'm like wow you're so original you're the hundredth person today to have sent me that <laughs> so you probably don't have that problem but that's something i deal with weekly <laughs> yeah 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 i've uh I've had similar stuff, but but not that one exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Uh, you should make a compilation, you know, like a, a collage. And, there are, there got to be and you say that, and you and you would say that's the real sad screenshot. <laughs> yes, <Thanks> yes. Too. <laughs> Damn, you're right. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Screenshotception. Screenshots of screenshots. Yep. Screenshots. <laughs> screenshots. What what I've gotten quite a lot also was also puzzling is people who are like. Why did you make me a top fan? I'm not even on there that much. Uh, like, I, I never interact with this page. Why did you make me a top fan? I don't get it. But the worst, in my opinion, is people who comment about it. Because the mail, it's fine. I, I don't care. It's in private. I don't have to add to reply. But mm -hmm. people who are like, you know, you post a thing. And you look at the comments, and nine comments out of ten is, oh, just flexing my top fan badge. <laughs> That's... I love the ones where someone's like, oh, I just flexed my top fan badge, and then they don't have it, and then the rest of the yes! comment thread is oh, people yes! tearing them to shreds. <laughs> I love that. And that sometimes, on a whim, that if they actually do have the badge, I'll remove it just to watch that unfold. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. I've done this a couple times. It's so, so great. It. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it can be a little disheartening. With, I mean, when it's the majority of comments on a given post, like when people yeah. do like one comment on a post and it's like lost in the in a sea of you know relevant comments it's fine but when you post something uh, that you really like and you hope people will laugh at it and all the comments are like oh just just here to flex my badge oh look at my badge uh that's when you're at the pet peeve of mine yeah. and that's when i that when i did yeah, them yeah, and uh, at some point when the anger really receded and uh, I don't feel it in my heart anymore. Then I reactivate <laughs> the badge, and the cycle goes on. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. nice. it affects you so much. <laughs> Nelson, do you still offer the T-shirt that says like I'm I'm a top fan of a meme page? So I've got something going on in my life. Yeah, uh, t I spent my life sweater. on Facebook, and all I got with this was this stupid top fan badge. That would be a good T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> I don't think I've ever been a top fan of your page, but I consider myself a top fan in my heart. That's not uh, really Nelson's. Oh, Nelson's. Yeah. So, oh, of course. No, I should have I, known. I, mean, I, mean, I, I like, should have known. No, like, it's fine. Like, no, no, it's all right. I like sad no. screenshots, but I've, I've been like, I've been in the, the, I've been in the cult of Mojito for like years mm. now. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like really, it's really, it's really taken over my free time for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I like getting the top fan of my own page, and then it's just a little flex. Like every now and then, some of my yeah. friends will be like, "Haha, I got top fan." It's like, "Yeah, well, so did I." So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a little pointless yeah, things really. that make me smile. Yeah, it would be exactly. It's a reality show to make top fans face off, or, like see who can get like the ultimate fan badge. Yes. Huh. We, I don't know. We, I, like, I mean, I initially, I thought you were saying TV. they should fight to the death, which I also agree with, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I used to work in reality TV, so this is kind of how I think of things. Like, oh, that would be a good reality show. Like, I, I think of like, I don't know, yeah, how you could just turn anything into a reality show. Damn, what, so, yeah. what TV show? Could you name one? And would I know it? Uh, yeah. So I worked. Uh, my first job was an Extreme Makeover Home Edition, where they like take the mm -hmm. houses of the poor people and yeah. um, tear, tear them down oh, and build yeah. them a new house with that fucking yeah. twink on cocaine. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> In my mind, I'm just thinking of every single reality TV show that has that, that matches that description. There's many. <laughs> yeah, well, no, this one, this one, they have to be like particularly deserving um, and like really good, saintly, you know, Christ-like or whatever people. Um, so it is like a really sick casting process. Cause you have people like dragging out like, when they're like, well, they want a house. They're dragging out like all the horrible things they've been through. Oh, and this family member died and this family member died. And then that's and like then, uh, uh, American our, Idol our or something. The ones that win are the yeah. ones that have the best sob stories always. Yeah. It's like the American, yeah. The American Idol of, of getting, getting oh a house God. just for being the most, <laughs> the most like pitiful <laughs> and uh yeah so it was, it was kind of sick to like make people go through all of that and then and then hear from the network executives like oh well uh you know the the daughter's got this like infected eye and it looks gross so we're not gonna give them a house <laughs> God damn. i mean that, <laughs> so it yeah, really sad. Know what happens but it's sad to get the <laughs> pun intended reality of it yeah, no, it, it, it's it's ruined TV for me now. So now I think of like really, really like sick and twisted reality show concepts that are just like openly sick and twisted. So there's no like, there's no um, there's no pretense about how how yeah, awful how it is. Like would, making yeah. people making people fight for top fan. I think that's that's really cool. That'd be a good show. Yeah. How how would you? Uh, it, it reminds me of that fucking show where they put a a, a, a naked Japanese man in a in some closet for a year or whatever. <laughs> and like in, a, in a little apartment by himself. Yeah. They did yes. a This American Life episode about that. Yeah. 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 And, uh, he, he started going mad uh, cause he was uh, like alone in this little apartment and naked all the time but for, uh, <laughs> for a year and a half or something like that it was, it was really weird. And, uh, but yeah, how would you organize this, um, top fan contest, uh, reality TV show? Like, would you take, top fans from different pages or from the same page and uh, how would they compete against each other I'm uh, I want, okay. I want to the same page and then it's who's truly the toppest of top fans you know like okay if you yeah. want that if you want that little crown of a badge then you have to kill fellow top fans for it <laughs> okay the, the oh cheap, so just a uh, battle royale then yeah exactly uh, I'll tell you the cheapest, stupidest, most realistic way to do this. You get mm -hmm. you get everybody um, filming themselves like on 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 Skype or something, any any kind of thing where they can film themselves and then also have their screen going at the same time, <laughs> and all recording themselves in front of their computers, and they're all just like talking out loud while they're scrolling the meme page and like talking out loud the comments that they want to give. And then you just edit this all together. Just a <laughs> bunch of people sitting in front of their computers. God, that sounds depressing, stuff. but like some quality <laughs> viewing. And yeah. they're all talking on discord, like, like trash talking each other about, Oh man, your, your comment fucking sucks. You know, this is, this is what you really have to say. Huh? I'm so it's a, P, this it's a POV, uh, like POV of just the internet uh -huh. and how it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the classic POV. I'm your boyfriend. I'm making the bed or something, but it's, I'm your boyfriend. I'm tr trash talking on your page. Yeah. I'm, I'm showing how I'm better than all of your other stupid fans. And I'm the yeah. topest fan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's my dream. Yeah, the aim high, aim high. <laughs> it would like it would be like the um, handicapped Olympics. <laughs> From South Park, the, the crack baby basketball. <laughs> the, yeah. the special, the special Facebook Olympics. Yeah, the, uh, the special snowflake Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> um. I'm uh, gonna drink a little water. I'm uh, parched. Yeah. I'll allow okay. It. Water. Water break. Everybody. That's right, what's great beans, about uh, not being live. Yeah. Sad, yeah. sad screen. Sad screenshots. What's the name that you go by? I might Justin or Sadman. I don't mind. Justin. Justin or Sadman. Yeah. yeah. Um. Justin, are you hydrated? I am. Yeah, sufficiently hydrated. Thank you. I'm catching up. I like. I just kind of rolled out of bed recently. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm charging the fees because it's 1.30 a.m. And, like, usually I'm up until, like, 3 anyway, but I just want to make sure I'm literate and not slurring, so... <laughs> Char we're charging the Vs? Yeah, like, a uh, V energy drink. Oh! Wait, what? I don't even know what that is. Oh, just yeah, like Red Bull, but nicer tasting. Oh. Oh! oh nice. Cool. Okay. Wow. Where can we, can we get... Do they ha export any? I don't know, but they've just... brought a new one called V Pure, and it's just like apple juice and then guarana and caffeine, and that's it. And it's delicious and effective. Oh, just like the well, that's just like the original Monster Energy, then. 
Rainbow but, uh, was, uh, I've, had, I've had Monster as well, but Monster is disgusting compared to V. Huh. Monster uh, used to be just apple juice? Yeah. Uh, in, in the beginning, the first, the first cans that were uh, like uh, the black ones with the green logo, mm. it was like... Um, it was apple juice with uh, caffeine and, and guarana and uh, acerola, I think. If you ever go to Norway, they've got one called Burn, so B-U-R-N. It's got like a flame oh, on the yeah. can. That yes. is we- delicious. And when I went there, I brought like five cans back to Australia, drank them all one day or two days because they were just so tasty, but I can't find them anywhere else. I actually, <laughs> once when I was um, inebriated and it was midnight, I messaged the company like like just typing pure shit. I was like, you have to bring this to Australia. It's so good. And then they emailed back and like, nah, that's not happening. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I kind of, it ruined my dream. Oh, well, we have it in France. Uh, it's uh, not exactly common, but uh, it's in a lot of supermarkets. Burn. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's uh, it's quite easy to find, and it's not more expensive than the other well, drinks. Well, maybe I'll get you to send me some. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I've got the hookup. Uh, do I you have think... nothing good to say about any of the American energy drinks. I'm sorry, <laughs> they all they all suck. So I think if that's... anything would entice me to go to America, it would be a food tour because I just yeah. love like burgers and stuff. Like I think that's what I would go to America for. Yeah, same. I want to. It's I want to try some of the stuff. Um, I want to try some of the stuff. I haven't. I haven't been really able to try real American stuff because it's quite hard to get here. I'm supposed. Mm-hmm. I suppose it's the same in Australia. And, well, yeah, uh, Taco Bell recently came over here, and Carl's Jr. And I did not like oh, Taco yeah. Bell. It was so like I love Mexican food, but it was just and like no, obviously it's Tex-Mex, but it was so underwhelming compared to how Americans seem to rave about it. Yeah, uh, it's like these uh, these American these uh, American restaurants that are American cuisine inspired by other countries. Yeah, they have <laughs> three big chains: uh, Taco Bell, which is inspired by Mexican cuisine. They have General Tso, which is inspired by Chinese cuisine, but it's still very American. Mm-hmm. And Olive Garden. Express. Olive Olive Garden. That's pr- probably the most famous one, which is uh, typically Floridian, but inspired by <laughs> Italian cuisine. And um, it's 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 kind of weird, but that uh, not the existence of these restaurants, but that a lot of people in America seem to be under the impression that uh, it's, it's like the real authentic thing. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, it's weird. We can make an entire podcast season just shitting on America, but <laughs> I don't think we I should. Mean, <laughs> I'm down. Uh, already done that, but I I would like to do it again. Uh, last time, uh, last time I had a. Uh, a Canadian dude, I don't remember who that was, but he was uh, uh, for um, episode 12, I think. Mm. And uh, we did that for a while. And there was a, a dude in the comments who said, uh, oh, I'm from America, and uh, I love uh, when you point out all the shit that's wrong with America. It really gives great perspective. He was raving about it. Uh, Americans kind of, some for some reason, love when you shit on them. Uh, it's, uh, we do. It, it's we want to just ourselves. Time, at the same time, whenever you post something, everyone always just assumes it. Like, well, on my page at least, they just assume that I'm American for, or for some reason. They're like, "Oh, why are you talking about yourself like this when I'm shitting on America?" It's like, no, 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 I'm Australian. <laughs> I don't respect yeah. your country. Um, <laughs> they just assume that I should be. Yeah. I, I have a question for both of you. Um, so you said that. You, the only thing that would make you want to come to America is uh, the food tour. I do food review videos. Are there any specific foods you're curious about that you want me to go review for you so you can eat them vicariously through me? I want you well, to go to that heart attack restaurant where everyone's dressed up as nurses and they give you just like, it, what's that thing where if you're 400 pounds or something, you eat for free? Yeah, I that's think the first be my thing goal. that came to my mind. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the same. Like, literally. <laughs> I was yeah, like, the heart attack hmm. grill. Yeah, that's the heart attack grill? Okay, I'll see if I can find that. I think, I yeah. know, I mean, it might <laughs> only be in Vegas or something greasy like that, but that is where I would go. But, that would be uh, the perfect place for it. Yeah, it's... Um, it's kind of frustrating though, because you know I, I watch um, a bunch of food review stuff, um, not regularly, but sometimes I like to binge on them, and uh, especially, of course, the Report of the Week, one of the best channels ever. And uh, it's always frustrating because he's always tasting products that are not available here, already always fast food that is only in America, and. Um, you know, when I watch a food tasting um, video, 
I don't really watch it to learn. I watch it to compare my experience to the person who's tasting to see that maybe I uh, missed something or, and if the person has similar taste than me, then I know uh, that I can trust their judgment because he will have it. I always, I always make the mistake of watching those sort of videos when it's like 2 a.m. and I'm high and all I've got in my fridge is some bread and like Vegemite and I'm like I'm watch- looking at all these burgers or like Gordon Ramsay or something and I'm starving and I, I don't know why I do it to myself but it is torturous. Same, same, same. Uh, especially since now that I'm on uh, I'm a triptylian, which is good for sleep but, you know, increases hunger. So yeah. I have these terrible... 2 a.m. cravings mm-hmm. uh, and um, yeah that's one of the reasons why I'm such in debt because <laughs> when I discovered Uber sorry Eats, I shouldn't laugh I'm sorry <laughs> no yeah it's, it's, it's fine it's fine <laughs> I, I, I absolutely know that I'm retarded food is my biggest I, expenditure like definitely like yeah I mean not now not anymore because I've I've put a stop to that uh, but it, to like muster up the discipline and self-control to do that took me about a year of you know daily um, hating myself and uh, yeah. keeping doing it and yeah uh, I, I don't do it so much now but fuck in 2017 it was like almost every day it was uh, it was terrible plus uh, at the time I was really depressed and I was playing video games all the time and I rarely got out of my bed so uh you know i I wasn't shopping for groceries uh quite often enough and um i was not in the mood to make myself food anyway so that was you know i spent i think almost 10k on delivery burgers in 2017 Sounds about uh, right. I recently That's moved. Sick. Like I used to live out, like far, away, far away enough from a city where there wasn't fast food within walking distance. There was no like Uber Eats or anything. I've recently moved like super close, and it's been my biggest downfall. <laughs> it's that easy yeah. access to hey, maybe I'm just gonna get a pad thai for dinner instead of being miserable and making something. But here's a yeah. life hack, and the life hack is just to be a meme page admin. In I think 2016, I posted a GoFundMe on my page, and I said any money will be spent purely on burritos and guacamole and i raised like 85 dollars or something and then just for the next week i'd post photos of me eating the burritos that i bought with that money so yeah, nice. if, if you ever can't afford food then just go fund me i gotta tr- i gotta try this i gotta try this so so me posting food review videos of things you can't eat is not going to be helpful or useful no, to your no. life at all okay <laughs> don't make me well, miserable I'll, but hey I'll, I'll just keep yeah. posting food reviews of me using butter as moisturizer that's that's Except probably if, better i mean there's a workaround if you okay. do if you do like food reviews and tastings of things that we know and that are available here then we'll have a base of you know comparison Absolutely. Uh, but okay. if it's if it's exclusively stuff that isn't available here uh it's not there's a, this guy who's super underrated uh called weird explorer he has this ch- youtube channel called weird explorer and he keeps traveling all around the world to try and taste all the fruits in the world oh my God. and he's like it's easy he, he tastes like 200 exotic fruits per year like he does Is he eating about- that one what's it called duran duran or whatever the one that it smells like <laughs> It smells like egg and it can taste like custard when it's good or it can just taste like egg when it's I've heard less, that, like it shut down entire buildings and like public transport when one of them got left somewhere because it just smells so bad. But yeah, 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 yeah. That one? Uh, yeah. I've, I've had very different durian eating experiences. But each time I eat durian, it's it's weird and different each time. But I mean, I live in Chinatown in the center of uh, Paris, so uh, there's durians, you know, at the nice corner flex. of my street. <laughs> I can <laughs> not really. It's the cheapest. It's oh, the dude, cheapest neighborhood in, in Paris. The city. Uh, any Euro <laughs> person, where like half oh, of the weekend I just went to like Switzerland. I'm like, yeah, shut the fuck up for the weekend. I had to drive five hours to get to. No, actually, no. It's only an hour to the beach. But the point is, I would still be in my state if I drove for another five hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, That's uh, <laughs> Australia is huge, um, but yeah, uh, I, there's durians easily accessible uh, where I live. So um, I, I often, you know, they're they're always outside because you know the stench becomes really powerful yeah. when it's inside. But when it's outside in the street and you walk in front of it, you don't really smell it. Uh, I don't know. There's, I, I think that um, when it's hot, that the the the, the 
the the fruit uh starts emanating some some kind of gases i don't know but uh you know when it's when it's um when it's not too hot outside and you have the the fruit sellers uh that are uh, you know have their uh, durians outside uh, in on the pavement uh it's it's fine and uh, the taste i would say is it's kind of blonde uh it reminds me of papaya a little and, so it's not uh, but, worth it for the potential for gassing yourself no, it's really, uh, it's really um, an experience. You know, it's kind of like this Instagram experience. The taste is not uh, as interesting as the uh, visual aspect because it's like these huge fruit. They are basically the size of watermelons, mm. but they're full, but they're all spiky all over. And um, yeah, they, they they look weird. And most people eat them for the for the legend. You know, just like surstroming. Yeah, you yeah, heard of this? Definitely. And. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I, I think it's the same thing because it doesn't taste bad. It's it's, but it doesn't taste. Uh, you know, it's far from being one of the best fruits. My I've, stomach I've just grumbled, but I'm pretty sure it's because I was thinking about the heart attack grill and not these shitty fruits <laughs> and disgusting <laughs> off fish. So <laughs> I am hungry now, but I just like to disclaim yeah. that it's not that. Yeah. I've definitely had some bad durian that tasted exactly like it smelled. I've had like I've oh, had shit. nice durian that tasted good, and I've had bad durian, and it, like I've never had the same durian eating experience twice. It's like it, it keeps changing. It's a rule the out, taste yeah. keeps changing on me. Yeah, I don't know where pe- these people are sourcing their durians from, but <laughs> probably 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 not as nice as the French durian. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure those come from China, but um, yeah, uh, my best durian tasting experiences was not eating fresh durian but uh like durian sorbet or uh mm-hmm. durian cake you know when it's uh like in something like uh yeah durian ice cream is really nice but fresh durian is not it's unremarkable you know it's not very mm. tasty it's kind of blonde it's that the it's the interesting con- contrast between the uh you know horrible stench of the thing and its taste that is mild very mild um i think that's what uh, excites people you know that's uh, that strange uh contrast um but yeah um american food uh you know i've had i had really two vivid experiences in my mind and there were uh from the same day because um at some point, I had a group of friends who had an apartment when they uh, often received people from abroad. And um, at some point, there was uh, this American girl uh, who was there. I remember it was in 2013, and it was during fall. And um, she she decided to make uh, us, uh, I mean, you know, the people who uh, housed them and uh, some of friends, she decided to, to set up um, a Thanksgiving dinner. Mm-hmm. And so oh, uh, yeah. she made uh, all the classic Thanksgiving stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, it's quite a vivid memory f- for me because this was the night I tasted both the best American stuff I ever tasted and the worst. Um, mm. What did you like and what did you hate? Oh, the, the what, um, I forgot about all the other plates i mean I, I can probably find the pictures but i really remember those two things uh there was this thing called cornbread which is yeah. absolutely delicious i fucking mm-hmm. loved it um and uh, every year since i uh, i tell myself yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna try to make this yeah but it seems like a lot of work and uh <laughs> you, know. well, you, well, you, you can get sure. corn cornbread mix here um you just you just pour it straight out of the package i make uh, yeah at work i make corn uh, muffins like all the time yeah, it's it's quite hard to find here the the, the proper corn flour. Um, kind of but, fucks uh, me up. Sorry, just a weird tangent. But that Americans sell marshmallow spread, like you know, like yeah. peanut butter or something. But it's a spread that's just marshmallow goo or something. Yeah. That, what the fuck? fuck yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. I, mean, I, I could probably it. eat it from the jar. But would you ever put that on like bread or something? What's what's the intent of it? Uh, it's good for desserts. You know, uh, just having having a marshmallow spread on like a you know cupcake or like in some sort of sort of layered thing yeah yeah but i i really i like the idea of just like putting marshmallow spread anywhere that you possibly can i love marshmallows on roasted yams or sweet potatoes (laughs) and so like jesus christ (laughs) 
<laughs> and you run a food review channel, you said? <laughs> I just post food reviews on Facebook and the kind of ideas that they're kind of weird, weird foods to review. Like, why would you review that? You know, mm. like I did Sour Patch Kids cereal. Um, oh, how is that? I, I only did... found out about that yesterday. Is it like I love Sour Patch like, Kids, but I can't fathom the idea of it being cereal. Well, have you, have you ever had Fruity Pebbles or Tricks? Any any fruity cereal um, that's yeah, got like yeah. some. Yeah, and it's like it's like if you just took all the lemon lime pieces out of any fruity cereal right. yep. and had all of those in the same bowl together. <laughs> so I don't think it's got lasting power. No. Uh, but it's it's not it's gonna just stick around. Milk to that mix, it just feels so wrong. Yeah, no, but it's like it's what I said. Like my keyword that I said in the review is that it's safe, you know, because it's just it's just a reconfiguration of True. cereals we yeah. already have. But it's like it's not appetizing. Like after I did yeah. the food review, I threw out the rest of the box. Like I don't feel like eating this it's, ever again. Some starving kid um, in Africa would have also thrown out that box. Yeah, <laughs> but now, now I I kind of I kind of want to review. You laugh um, about <laughs> Review uh, marshmallow spread as uh, like w- ways that you can use marshmallow spread. That's that seems very, very uh, like I like I, I revel in how dis- how disgusting our culture is when it comes to food. It's like it's not a matter of something should be made. It's like can we make it? Yeah. Um, like when they were thinking like, about nuking the moon. At no point were like maybe. Well, I mean, oh, they yeah. didn't ultimately. Thank God. But it was when did a- the U.S. When was the U.S. going to nuke the moon? During the Cold War, back when, like, before they landed on the moon, they floated the idea of as a show of force against the USSR about just yep. blowing up the moon. And they were like, it was a genuine concept that they thought had merit. Yeah. Like, they, uh, but I also is, thought invading is, Vietnam and Iraq and that had merit, but so let's not go We there. actually did that, yeah. No, Amer- <laughs> America is, like, a giant cultural shitpost. And, um, yeah, so is Australia, but it I... seems in a much better way. Australia is a better cultural shit post. Yes, I, or I believe. As a, no bias here, but I believe. <laughs> like we can like, just call okay, people what's... cunt, and like, and in America, you'd be like, "What okay. the fuck did you just say?" But your friends would be like, "Yeah, cunt, fuck yeah," you know. Like it's it's great. <laughs> it's so just free, land of the free yeah. and the brave. Right. Yeah. So you're you like you you have that whole uh, you stole that whole freedom thing, and then actually held true on it. And America's more like, how can we abuse ourselves with marshmallow spread yes. and blowing up our moon? Well, you've got to pack on the pants and... somehow to go to that heart attack crew and eat for free. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, America, America the, the spirit of America is, um, yeah, sadism, like self, self sadism. America's, or, I don't know, that would be. Masoch- yeah, masochism, sorry, yeah. In my head, Amer- I'm just America's- imagining a fat man saluting a waving flag with eagles and flames and everything, and it's a beautiful <laughs> image, it is. Yeah, we, we, like, we want to celebrate life by, like, internalizing and externalizing um, our pain. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, I, we'll do. and I've been brainwashed into loving it, I don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's crazy how much, uh, I mean, when you look at Anything in America, whether whether it is the cost of healthcare or universities or the working conditions that are awful, despite the fact that it's supposed to be a, a first world country, but it has worse work laws than a lot of third world countries, and um, so much stuff. The fact that they all use their cars, which is by far the least practical uh, mode of transportation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everything seems to be built against. Uh, yeah, self-inflicting of of pain, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Hurt, hurt by Johnny Cash should be the new uh, theme song uh, of America. I, the I don't new remember. American anthem. Yes, thank you. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. I agree. I, I I I agree with all of that. And, and I'm proud. Yes. I'm proud of all of it. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I know that it's originally by Trent Reznor. Don't at me. Uh, don't vibe check me on that, please. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, 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 and of and of course, the eating habits are are part of it. Although you know, a lot of this food seems to be enjoyable, at least uh, when it gets into your mouth. You know, um, it's the aftermath it's, that's the problem, as we hear about Taco yeah. Bell also often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really want to try Taco Bell. Uh, This is one of the things I've been really curious about. There's uh, another um, Americano-Mexican chain that is uh, 
that has some restaurants here called um, Chipotle, but it was mm-hmm. it was so bad. I, I I've been there twice. I've been there what there once. And it was awful. And then I was like, yeah, maybe it was a bad day. Maybe it was... Okay, so I tried it again a few months later. And it was so fucking bad. It was horribly blonde, actually. And tasteless. Uh, and um, I really hated it. What was... What is just... Like, well, that's... Yeah, what we love about Chipotle here is that it's just a few simple ingredients combined into the burrito wrap or the bowl or whatever. And so that, is that what you hated is that there just wasn't anything extra going on? There was no, there was oh, no, no. salt, there was no spice? Or... Not at all. I mean, there's a thing that we say in France is that if a dish has more than three main ingredients, then you can destroy it throw it in the trash um and um yeah i don't know i I'm, I'm all for simplicity but it was uh it was very watery and blonde and also it was really expensive uh like i felt i felt really ripped off um I feel like my happiness they, with uh, Mexican food changes purely hinges on how much guacamole they add. I'm willing to pay the two dollars, <laughs> but if they give the most tiddly amount, then I hate it. But if they like dollop it in, then whatever else is wrong with it, I I can forgive that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you same. think the ingredients just weren't prepared very well in the Chipotle? Like each each individual thing that you like, what did you order? Uh, I don't remember, but I order a, a, a normal thing you know the you can tell she does food reviews <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I mean, just like chipotle is so revered here like people people are really passionate about their chipotle so i i wondered like how they must if if chipotle is just fundamentally shit and we don't know it or if there was something about the translation when they made this chain store in france that it got fucked up somehow when, when, really, when you say chipotle is so revered <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no idea. But yeah, both uh, are pretty good hypotheses. Um, I does. Uh, I I have no idea. I could not tell you. When, when Justin, you're uh, so revered, say about- I, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say as soon as you said that, I just had the team America like America. Fuck yeah! <laughs> just in my head, it was just yes. like, go America. You revere your shitty Mexican food chain, and then try and deport <laughs> I mean- all your Mexicans. It's not shitty. Well, because because our because our main this is how abused and brainwashed we are. Because our main fast food chains are just are so um, terrible. When we do some sort of slight upgrade and level of <laughs> healthiness, like people are lining up at the door. They're like, "Oh my gosh, there's no preservatives in it. I can I can actually see the beans. They're really beans. They're not just mushed up stuff from a can. And I can see the lettuce. It's really lettuce. It has a real color of green on it. And we're just." We're just so overjoyed uh, yeah, to have like, uh, like an remember. instant thing to eat that's not like absolutely terrible for you. So basically, soylent green. <laughs> yeah, we normally eat <laughs> soylent green. So when we can see like real food with our own eyes, like, and it's available in a chain restaurant, and you can and you can get through the line in um, you know three minutes or less, like we like we we flip out. <laughs> I remember uh, what I've been told a few times. Uh, by people who are like from here and went to visit the US is that they have uh, this ingredient that is very typically uh, from the USA and doesn't really exist elsewhere called high fructose corn syrup yeah and, mm-hmm. um, and apparently it. it's 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 uh, linked it's linked to uh, some um, uh, Iowa corn lobby or whatever whoever yeah I'm from Iowa the, yeah <laughs> Proud and, of it. Um, <laughs> and so, um, Are we gonna so, edit that bit out? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep that in. <laughs> uh, and so, basically, because they put that shit everywhere, um, uh, uh, a lot of people have told me that uh, most of the food in the USA tastes like it's doused in honey. Um, some mm. loved it, some hated it, but uh, it's the thing that say everything tastes like honey. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally taste blind to that now. But. Did uh, did super size me have any impact in America? Because I mean, my friend's dad went to America and he went to McDonald's because you know McDonald's same everywhere. He ordered the kids serving of hot cakes or pancakes or whatever you want to call it, and even that had mm-hmm. nine pancakes in it. Whereas you get like a large in Australia, it's got like three pancakes. But everything is just so extremely 
over the top. And I wonder if Super Size Me actually had any kind of change or anything in American culture. It it did. It did. Um, they stopped offering the Super Size option. And now, also in a lot of, not, not, not in Texas where I live, but in a lot of states, they require... To you to post the calories next to the meal. So McDonald's realized they can make more money from their food by giving you smaller portions to fit fit a certain calorie size on it. People say, yeah. oh, the, the Egg McMuffin's only 350 calories. That's not so bad. So, um, yeah, they started making much smaller portions to allow you to budget your calories better. And I was reading something about how the food, science, food scientists at McDonald's are gradually trying to like incorporate more more like fiber into the foods and and make them less calorie dense it, it makes so sense that, because like, if you're literally yeah. killing your clientele then it's not a great business model <laughs> yeah ah. so mcdonald's mcdonald's is really trying to eliminate everything about their food that you can talk shit about um but it's still it's still it's still not re- not actual food they're just trying to make it fit into yeah, the scientific yeah. parameters of what food, food technically enough. should yeah. be <laughs> yeah food enough yeah so it, it made a huge impact nice. i'm gonna yeah. be maybe like a contrarian here but i really hate that uh that whole shit uh super size me was completely in my opinion hypocritical the guy ate mcdonald's at every meal you're not supposed to do that mcdonald's is not unhealthy if you eat it if you eat it once in a while everything in moderation right and yeah i there's people who, who can eat mcdonald's i mean everyone can eat mcdonald's for one or two meals per week you will not get sick it's not unhealthy for you uh what is unhealthy is eating too much but even eating too much of apples will make you sick you know uh yeah. that's what i mean too i much guess the means. thing is was that it wasn't so unbelievable that there actually was a decent chunk of maybe american society maybe not like huge like it could be tens of thousands of people or something like that that actually was doing that though and so mm-hmm. it's not so unbelievable but i agree i mean everyone's responsible for their actions all things in moderation you can die from drinking too much water yeah and yeah one th- and because of that one thing i can really get behind is uh printing the number of calories next to the meals that i'm very much in in favor of that's great mm-hmm. in my opinion but uh you know i think that it's um it's kind of infringing on people's liberties to, uh, you know, uh, try to uh, rule what they can and cannot eat. Uh, let people who want to overeat, overeat. Um, True. And, and people, uh, people have lost sight of their own. Like, we should be accountable for our own actions. And it's worse yes. when you're a parent, you're feeding your kids that. But that's it, is that uh, yes. people, people need to realize you are responsible, responsible for your actions. Actions have consequences, all of that. People have truly lost sight of that these days. Yeah, and uh, the fact that you're removing responsibility for that, I mean, that's 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 maybe the number one thing I hate about Americans. Um, it's why it's why uh, I'm really excited about uh, Huawei making their own um, operating system for phones, because even if there's a lot of things that you can say about China, and it's pretty much the opposite of a perfect state, um, I'm so sick of only having the choice between Apple and Android. Yeah. Uh, cuz i don't i don't like apple i don't like google and um, there's so much um, you know it's that spirit that is embedded inside the products like for example when you put the volume up uh, it blocks you from augmenting the volume and it says uh, you know if you listen to that uh, for too long uh, your your ears oh, yeah, uh, can damage, hurt yeah. i hate this so much that, that is that has made me hate android uh, despite the fact that it's it's technologically brilliant, there's a lot of great things about it. But the fact that you cannot put the um, put the volume up all the way between uh, without having some kind of warning, uh, this yeah. may be dangerous for your ears. And uh, same for the brightness. Um, you know, the, they're all fucking. Uh, you know, uh, between it's that baby, and uh, and all the sen- and all the censorship that is going on on Facebook uh, or by Apple or. Uh, you know when they beeps when they do the beeps on TV, that is disgusting. You know, and and uh, America is so everyone. crazy for that. They will censor they're, swear yeah. words, but they'll happily show people shooting everyone and expo- like blowing up. But that sense of swear words and anything sexual is just too far. I just don't understand yeah, that. And yeah, they, they treat everyone like second graders, uh, and it's uh, it's. I'm not offended by a lot of things. 
far from it but this in my opinion is really offensive it's condescending and it's patronizing and i hate it so much that's As we're talking about this i just got a little notification on my computer that says you're waking up in five and a half hours and first of all i don't know when i've ever woken up or been on my computer at 7 30 <laughs> in the morning but it, it's just trying to tell me to go to sleep and it's not happening <laughs> Yeah. 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 Shut yeah. up, computer. Like, like the new shit that they put on YouTube that uh, gives a warning if you watch too many videos in a day. Like, uh, maybe you should take a break, or Netflix does the same shit. Uh, to be fair, Nintendo does that too, so it's not exclusively American, but you you don't have to. Um, it's, it's much less obstru- obtrusive uh, mm-hmm. in Japanese products. It's more like a suggestion. Uh, and uh, in the American products, they're like, stop! Stop right there, criminal scum! Yeah. <laughs> You've been- well, I, I think you're. I think you're pointing the blame in the wrong direction, though. It's not. It's not so much the companies themselves. It's the lawsuit co- culture that That's we have true. That's here. That's true. Like that and woman gets sued people, for the hot people, coffee at McDonald's. Like what the fuck? Yeah, people. Okay, people um, need to to like di- the the com- the companies know that like they have to protect their liability and they're obsessed with it because any any way that people can damage themselves. Uh, they want to. They want to blame the thing that they damage themselves with, and not not their own decision making. They they're they're like, well, I wasn't I wasn't warned that this could be damaging, and this has been going on for years and years and years and years in the U.S. of people people that are that are really poor. Maybe it has something to do with the wealth gap. I don't know. But the only way they can make money is to um, sue big companies. <laughs> there, are like, there are a lot of people in America that make their full-time living off of uh, suing companies and getting settlements. Okay, so a few things I want to uh, say about this. First, Justin, uh, you got absolutely... You have to read up on that uh, McDonald's coffee lawsuit because it's... It's a really bad example of a frivolous lawsuit because, you know, that woman had the the coffee that was extremely hot uh, on her leg and her flesh started melting like she was really in her right to sue. And it was it was a really valid trial. Uh, She was. uh, Yeah, she she lost part of her leg because the coffee was so hot. Uh, It was it was really, really bad stuff that happened there. Um, And. a lot of people are, are taking this as an argument that, uh, you know, they make a lot of lawsuits for frivolous and reasons that should not exist. And that's the worst example you could pick. But that's, but- that's what's, that's, and I, I 100%, like for sure, maybe it was a bad example and I should read up on it. But now they've got like the caution hot on the lid. And like, is that going to stop anyone's leg burning off if they spill coffee on it? Like, it, it is purely to protect from that. And that's all it like takes. It's just that yeah, one. It's, a, it's an example of the liability yes. thing. Yeah, yes. for sure. But, yeah, but yeah, no, absolutely right. Liability. That probably is a wrong option, but it exists. So, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, they made the coffee less like scalding hot too. That would be nice. Yes, or just good. yes they they have, um, yeah. but. Um, yeah, they uh, they used it to serve it to the cus- to customers when it was still boiling, like it was hundred degrees Celsius. I don't yeah. know how how much that is in Fahrenheit, but uh, yeah, that was uh, th- that was a problem. It was like ninety five or hundred degrees, and uh, they had had many complaints because of that, and they had always ignored them. So that lady who uh, who got a that leg burn sense, uh, yeah, did a yeah. really good thing actually. And I she, mean, and I probably would have because... sued too, especially if I lost my leg. But like, I mean, I was in <laughs> my local supermarket the other week, and I, I mean... saw a puddle on the floor, and I stood there and looked at the puddle for a solid two minutes, just thinking of maybe I should just slip on that puddle and then get paid out. But <laughs> yeah. I decided yeah, I'd yeah. stood there long like, enough yeah. that their footage would show me considering that. And I was like, oh well, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> it's like <laughs> time to man. Yeah. <laughs> in this economy, catch. like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, what is even uh, I don't think it's worse or, um, uh, yeah, it's worse. Uh, it's that the existence uh, in the U.S. of companies uh, which which don't produce anything, they just buy patents and then they oh, sue God, people. Yeah. For, for, that's a huge thing. That's called patent trolls. Yeah. And these are, yeah, these are companies that don't do anything except buying patents for obscure things that never got made and then uh, suing people for using something that is vaguely resembling the, those like patterns. the ambulance chases of companies like it's it's so bad yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. We're just a very uh, greedy bloodthirsty legally driven 
We know. Culture. The world knows. Yeah. We really do. We yeah. look at America and just like, you guys think you're the top yeah. and everyone's just like, Jesus fucking Christ, again. Yeah. And, and now, now you have to suffer with all of our exported media products, like limiting how, yeah. how loud you can listen listen to your volume. So you're welcome for, for all of this. Mm. Um, on behalf of America. Australia I'm, is I'm very prone to Americanization. Like, it's sad to see us follow in America's state. And it's, oh, it, like, <laughs> I could go on and on and on, but, like, one example is just every single war America goes into, Australia is like, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, let's go. And then, for what? Really, for what? And now they're like, oh, we got to stop terrorism. But the only reason certain people are targeting Australia is because we went and joined this stupid fucking war. Anyway, I can yeah. get very angry you're about you're this, but <laughs> you're, welcome. you're welcome for that too. Yep. Thank you for apologizing on America's behalf. Thank you. No, no, I'm, 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 uh, I'm accepting. I'm accepting the the the, the gratitude on America's <laughs> behalf. I know, I know that you're you're, you're grateful for all, am, all that we've right. done you're for right. you. Truly, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I mean, my was it the second or was it the third? My third girlfriend uh, was a refugee from the. Damn, you can actually lose count. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No girlfriends. No. My, yeah. My, <laughs> <Zero>. <laughs> my my third girlfriend was a refugee uh, from the the Bill Clinton war on the Central Europe. So. Uh, kind of. Oh, thank yeah. you. I the Yugoslavia. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, we sent her to France. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. Well, have yeah, you're welcome that. for that too. I wouldn't have met her if you didn't bomb uh, her parents' house. So, <laughs> thanks, Bill. Yeah. Look at that silver lining. Yeah. <laughs> Epstein didn't kill what himself. Else? What, yeah. el- what else? What else can I um? Can I accept your gratitude for? I know we've we've done yeah. so much. Yeah, <laughs> we've but done I, so much. I think that's that's weird. The hypocrisy of a nation that called it itself the land of the free, uh, oh, and truly. which seems. There's, they. It seems that they have less freedom than what the average like nation. Like sixty or something for press freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not just press freedom. It's also there's a uh, always this battle for the the rights to abortions, and uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, they something see, I really have problem with is for profit prisons, which perpetually oh, like, fuck yeah prisoners pay that like is... one cent a day for literal slave labor, and their sentences mm-hmm. can just get extended by like prison wardens, which are for profit, not like judges or anything. It's sickening. That actually makes me <laughs> so infuriated. Yeah, have you yeah, listened to crazy. Kanye West's new album? I have not. I'm not a Kanye West no. fan. But uh, is neither it am I. Worth it? Well, he spent he spends a few songs talking about how we should abolish the Thirteenth Amendment, which is the one that ended slavery, but made an exception for slavery as a uh, acceptable a consequence. You know, yeah, as a as a punishment. So he wants to you know abolish Rewrite and make it. make a new a new yeah a new amendment that just says no slavery period what, what you know I you can you can do is... your do your prison time but not 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 have forced labor in prison time i love how americans are always like oh you can't get rid of our amendments but in the name it is literally an amendment it is a change yeah. to the like <laughs> it is changeable right yeah, it it just takes a very very long process to get rid of an amendment and um i don't know everybody's tired they have to go to bed at some point <laughs> maybe you could just like amend it amend the amendment Truly. yeah i mean yeah, I don't I'm, know. I'm, sh- we could. I'm sure it's possible but uh yeah if it, anyone can well, Kanye can <laughs> dude sure. i don't know maybe and he's he friends with and he's friends with trump so uh Maybe, maybe. He but, is black, so he does have the the right to amend an amendment that has to do with slavery. Um, and nobody else is allowed. That's true. So, that's true. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I, thought, I thought you'd say uh, he has the right to say nigger, but... He also, he also has that right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Completely. <laughs> You've, you've, said, you've, said, you've said you've said you've said the n-word with a hard hard r on this show before yes. nelson yes. yeah i i'm not gonna do it but um no problem yeah, I'm, I'm i don't feel ad revenue i don't want to kind of <laughs> <laughs> we're never gonna get we're never gonna get dollar shave club sponsoring us now at this <laughs> or some weird Nord vpn or something hey if, <laughs> if the ever if the angry video game nerd has ads on his videos then we can True. Uh, does he do? Does he say the N word with a hard R? Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. If uh, I can get married to a babe and live in Japan, then I think we're onto a good thing here. <laughs> yes. Uh, but does he say it with a hard R? 
Yeah, the, uh, the infamous yeah. bridge scene. Have you ever seen like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> his face in the video? It's just like a still shot of him on a bridge in a game. Uh, makes me laugh every time. And he's saying, and he's saying the N word with a hard R. Well, yeah, he just got angry or something, um, and he's like, "Ah," oh, mm, and then says it, and then it was like a big thing for all of a week, and now no one cares except yeah. in meme form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it, well, it hmm. was pretty disgusting how Ethan Klein dropped him under the bus uh, that time. But apart from that, it was pretty uneventful. But you know, um, on the other hand, I. I, I remember uh, every time I said it, and it was like during an explanation of something. It was never, you know, in anger or directed at someone. I said, I remember I said, if you type the word nigger on Facebook, you get automatically banned. I didn't call someone a nigger. But um, what I wanted to say, let's just uh, <laughs> roll back a little, <laughs> is that when I learned about the for profit prisons uh, scheme, which is pretty mind blowing by itself. It didn't shock me that much because it seemed really in line with the True. work culture the part, in the US yeah. in general. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of people. Um, it, it's it's um, it's not a it's. <clears throat> A lot of people there are called wage slaves, which is a term that doesn't exist here. I don't know in Australia, but that seems like a typically American term. Yeah, I mean, apart from the meme, like, wagey, wagey, like that classic meme, like, it's not really a thing here, no. Like, we don't yeah, have to rely uh, on tips because we get paid $2 an hour or something like exactly. that. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, are saying, yes, I hate my job, but I can't quit because uh, I could not pay my rent or something, something. Mm -hmm. And that's not normal. That's what no, welfare that is, is for. Uh, that's, that, you don't have, <laughs> that you don't it's have so to be afraid. It's so hard to get welfare here. It's really, really hard. Yes, you have, you have to like they, you get denied several times before you can do it. Disability is a lot easier to get in get onto. So people kind of have to pathologize and sort of make up like, oh well, I was I was in a car accident when I was uh, twenty one, and my neck doesn't move so good. So that's like they're just trying to get <laughs> like, like the weed, the medicinal marijuana by doing that. Well, like, the back the, the, hurts. <laughs> like the main thing is that they're like they're me they're mentally unable to work, but you you can't really get any yeah. benefits for doing that or just like i'm 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 poor and not very smart so you kind of have to sort of have to beef up certain things and then and then people are you know if they do find some kind of job opportunity or, or something changes for them they they're afraid to do it because they're going to lose their disability and it's pretty sick so all, all the welfare is just getting diverted to disability now and you have it a bunch of people that psychologically so much more sense you know? why there are yeah, daily yeah, shootings so in america it's like it makes so <laughs> yeah. much more sense <laughs> but, Dude, but for real but I, but yeah, I it's part of, of a... I kind of want to sometimes, but <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Oh, uh, you're going to get banned real soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I want to. I want to. I think more of us should be open about like all of us that have like homicidal thoughts and and just don't act on them. Like we need to come out and say like, uh, no, this this makes a lot of sense why people are so frustrated because yeah, yeah, you know does. people people yeah. are treating it treating it like like these weird boogeyman. Yeah, phantoms, like, oh, like, I can't like, believe it happened yes. for the hundredth time this year and it's February. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, it's like thousands of people are are feeling like wanting to do that and just aren't doing. It. <laughs> so yeah, we should yeah, come yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, and that's uh, identify that's cool. as a shooter. <laughs> <laughs> identify as a would-be shooter yeah yeah i did identify as demi shooter literally the next shooting that happens you should hashtag me too <laughs> wow <laughs> I mean, uh, is that too far really after all we spoke about that was too far uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to publish this conversation, and if it gets removed, then we know that it was maybe a little too far, but uh, I like it. Uh, I mean. uh, I'm not against it, personally. <laughs> well, I'll do it, then. It I'll was, take this. No. I'll, I'll be the one to do it. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I don't know. The yeah, it's, thing it's is a like whole... a whole other two-hour conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's a whole it's a whole thing, you know? Uh, people are, are keep... Um, working, they, they work too much. Like uh, I, I know that there's a lot of uh, people in America that uh, do overtime, but unpaid, and it, this seems normal there. It's, it's hugely illegal here. It wasn't, it wouldn't fly. And uh, and you know they, they keep 
working in jobs that they hate because they feel that they don't have a choice and if they try to change jobs um th that uh, you know they will have uh, too too many time and they will be unemployed and they risk losing their car or their house stuff like this uh that is not freedom do you That's the fucking dream, right? Though. Yeah, that you cannot call yourself free if you have this shit. Uh, and same for you know the oh something that really blew my mind lately. I learned that in uh, the U.S. you have to pay if you get an organ transplant. Yeah, that was incredible. That's, that's incredible. You know, se selling or buying organs here is extremely illegal. That's uh, that's uh, called that's considered human trafficking, and uh, you, you it's it's illegal to make someone pay for an organ transplant. Very illegal. Um, and, you pay and for all medical procedures here. That's insane. Here all you pay. Here you pay if you want to get a boob job or something like that. That is really not useful. But How actually, much? the more. The more of your life. Oh, not that. <laughs> yeah. Job is I'm just trying to budget here, and I'm just curious. <laughs> I want. I want to expand the healthcare system in France. Now that I know about this, you're going to pay yeah, for everything except so job. Yeah. That's that's fucking ludicrous. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, there's a, there's a few things that you still have to pay for, like uh, glasses, frames, or uh, uh, some kind of uh, of teeth that look prettier than others. Uh, if you if you don't get the basic teeth, then you have to pay an extra. But if you don't get the yellow plastic teeth, you have to, you have to upgrade. Yep. <laughs> what if exactly EA was in charge of dentistry? It's like, <laughs> the lower price of five dollars, you can buy one more tooth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> America would do it. Yeah, but that yeah. was one of the big campaign promises of Emmanuel Macron. He said, uh, I want to make uh, uh, eyeglasses and um, dentistry free for everyone. Uh, this is You shouldn't have to pay for this. Uh, it should be free like the other health pr procedures. Oh, and, um, this is so sad. Why? Oh, okay. <laughs> just for us. Like, like, say, like, yeah, like, he's, he's campaigning on free dentistry and over here in America. We're just like, oh. I, I want I want a flu shot, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I suck. Oh, say shot. can you see? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, ba Barely. basically, basically, how healthcare works here is that the more your life is in danger, the less you pay. You know, if mm -hmm. you if you have a sore throat or a cold, and you go to your doctor, you're probably gonna pay a little. This uh, is if the you future have, uh, that libtards want. Unbelievable. If you have a really yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and if you have a really bad condition that endangers your uh, your life, then you pay nothing. You know, basically that's how it works. And yeah. of course, if you do a, an operation that like a nose job uh, because you want to look prettier, then you have to pay full price. Obviously, that's not going to be reimbursed. But um, so unfair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it. Uh, that's how it works in actually most of the world. Oh yeah, something that completely blew my mind lately. There's no maternal leave in the USA, and it's like no. the it's the only country in the world. And yet they'll still ban abortion yeah. because yeah, we that's... want we want people to enter committed relationships where the woman is financially dependent on the man before she gets pregnant. So these are the things you have to think about before you get knocked up. You're not going mean... to get any maternity leave, so so think that through. I mean, they don't yeah. have any paternity leave either, so it's not really. Mm -hmm gendered i mean the well most... no no because they, they, for the woman on the you know thinking everybody's going to be in a heterosexual couple right ideally um then uh you know well, some they, that's they more want, ideal to be in a non-heterosexual relationship <laughs> well they Sounds want like they're they trying want... to <laughs> so th so thinking that that like after okay, you get that boob job know, <laughs> yeah, hypothetically ideal. You uh, you get a you get a boob, boob job, and then you get you're a woman. You get married to a man, and a man you you choose a man who has enough money that he can go work full time while you stay home with the baby for the first like four years of the baby's life till they're old enough to like you know get into kindergarten. Um, and then what maybe if he's not maybe getting enough get to work at that point. <laughs> but you do you don't you don't marry a guy that survives off tips. Let's be real. So. Yeah, no, they want they want they want all women to be objectifying men for their income and and only only having babies after they get Christianly married to a man who can support them full time while they have no maternity leave and just quit their careers, you know, temporarily or permanently to raise yeah. children. That's that's what that's what the 
mainstream Republicans want here. So yeah, that's why we don't have maternity leave. Mm. So that's a society they want. But it's like <laughs> a society like it only took an hour so. and forty minutes to say the S word. I'm surprised, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Society. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I oh, lost. God. I lost. I lost the game. <laughs> oh damn. Well. Yeah. Uh, so you know what? Let's talk about Australia for a change. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. is, it, is it true that all the animals want to kill you all the time? Like the spiders uh. <laughs> or that shit? Is it is it exact? Is it a, a little exaggerated or is it accurate? I mean, like if you're a fucking idiot and you go lie down in the middle of the bush, which like is probably like half an hour away, then you're probably gonna get bitten by something. But I mean, if you just inhale, like sure, we have spiders crawling over the walls and that's fine. You may see a snake in your garden, but like just don't be an idiot. Is the rule of thumb, I guess. And yes, dingoes do eat babies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there's no to maternity leave, so you got to get rid of them somehow. <laughs> you have maternity. You don't have maternity leave. No, right? we do. I was just kidding. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I, me as an American, if I have a baby and I want to get out because yeah. I, I didn't, go I didn't marry the right man, then I go to Australia. Okay, yeah. <laughs> done deal. So yeah, no, that's pretty now. good. Um, yeah. What yeah. I what I don't like, like when people go swimming, and sure, there's a shark attack maybe every like six months, and suddenly it's oh, we got to kill the sharks, but. Just don't be an idiot. Leave the sharks alone. They're swimming in their home, and we're the ones. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, they want to kill the sharks. In yeah, Australia? they keep shark culls, which is proven to not reduce shark attacks, but they keep doing it, and it's pretty infuriating. That's what they're famous for. The the great mm. the Australian great white shark. <laughs> I think they're thinking of South Africa, them? but sure. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know anything, but. Yeah. I, 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 when I think of great white sharks, I think of Australia. I mean, we don't, sometimes don't, do, but it's more like really? tiger sharks and bull sharks and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a great barrier reef, but that's. Which is fully bleached corals. and dying now, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, not exactly, but mostly, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I never heard about Australian sharks before. I know shark finnings is a, is a really huge thing in Japan, but mm. I mean. That's, yeah, I mean, like um, the river, which is like five minutes from my house, the Brisbane River, uh, it's yeah. got heaps of bull sharks in it, so like you shouldn't go swimming in there. Oh, yeah! But also, it's river like a sharks. filthy river anyway. Yeah, yeah, uh, like they're fully normal. Nice. Didn't the sharks have Australian accents in Finding Nemo? Yeah, like Bruce and I'm stuff, making... yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what. That's why I think of Australia when I think of great white sharks. Yeah, no, uh, so you're right, there are, there, are, there are the occasional one, but it's not like the main shark. I wouldn't. Oh, okay. I, I wouldn't know. I watched it in in French. That's one thing that I <laughs> just dubbed. That's they didn't, sick have, they didn't have Australian accents in French. I mean, I don't. I don't remember. It was a long time ago, but uh, I don't think so. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's one thing what I a, hate about French culture: the the fact that dubbing is so mainstream and is usually the default. Uh, that sucks so much, and I, nobody knows. Why they do that? Because we all hate it. At least every French person I know hates dubbed movies and TV shows, but it's still the norm. Maybe because the lobby of translators or vo voice actors <laughs> is <union>. too strong. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. That's, uh, but yeah. Are they kind yeah. of obsessed with keeping the French language preserved and so they don't want, you know, just English, English to proliferate and take over your language? Uh, there's uh, there's two you know there's two currents. Uh, is a thing that you need to keep in mind is here we have a lot of boomers um, in um, in America. The generation that has the most members alive currently is millennials, but mm -hmm. in most of Europe it's it's baby boomers. We have and Australia, much more. For sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have mm -hmm. much more baby boomers here, and most baby boomers. Um, you know, they've been uh, rocked their um, whole childhood with stories of GIs that came to liberate the country and uh, gave us chewing gum and ketchup. And so uh, <laughs> most most boomers, most boomers here have this big harden for America and they want uh, to emulate as much as possible uh, from it. And the millennials have kind of the opposite view because what the millennials, what we learned when we were kids is that, uh, you know, there was this 911 thing that the America basically <laughs> brought on themselves because they uh, invented. <laughs> big, 
911, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but yeah, we grew up with we, we grew up with stuff like um, uh, Don't um forget, you know. Uh, well, no, we we grew up with oh yeah, Americans are are whining about one terrorist attack, but they never got a war on their homeland, and they're doing all this shit. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, even if you know they invented Al Qaeda uh, to fight against the communists, really? so it's really yeah. it's really their fault, and they brought this on ourselves. And the fact that uh, America was so traumatized with 9-11, a lot of us uh, took offense to that because we see it as nothing. Like, we got invaded by Nazis. We got bombed. Uh, We got our country invaded uh, a thousand times during history, and uh, we don't make a big deal out of it. And the Americans get this one small attack that killed a a, a handful of people, and they make this big fuss out of it. And Mm -hmm. that's what really kick-started a strong anti-American sentiment in uh, my generation, you know? And also so there was all that happened uh, later, the, the war on Afghanistan, the war on Iraq. Uh, we're really anti-war here. So, uh, you know, uh, we saw we, we, we saw that on a, on a big, um, bad uh, light. Uh, actually, uh, there was kind of a small cultural revolution uh, in France in 1968. And that all started because of uh, anti-Vietnam war protests. So n- not even a thing that we were really involved in. And um, so, yeah, my, my, my <laughs> generation the French that started it. <laughs> 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 but truly, it's so, uh, so, so yeah, we boomer, like bought your war from you. You're welcome. So yeah, b- b- boomers, um, you know, they they grew up with this uh, this. Um, this image of uh, America being, you know, like uh, so great. They, they went on the moon. They invented, uh, uh, you know, Hollywood chewing gum, and uh, you know they're uh, they're so great. And so, um, so yeah, boomers here uh, want to do everything like the Americans, uh, and uh, you know, it's and it's more and more like uh, our major hardline right wing uh, political party re- renamed itself the Republicans not a long time ago. So, uh, so yeah, 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 and yeah, it's getting quite strong. They, uh, they try to uh, always use English uh, words all the time, even if they, you know, none of them really knows how to properly speak English, but they try, you know, and uh, that's that's that gives a lot of uh, weird words like uh, for a car park, uh, they say a parking, uh, uh, etc., st- stuff like this, and. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, there's been there's been several you know shifts uh, back and fro, and um, I remember uh, for a long time tomato ketchup was banned in school kitchens because because uh, 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 the, the the government thought that we it, it would uh, you know um, teach youngsters. Uh, junk food instead of the nice french uh, cuisine and mm-hmm. so uh yeah ketchup was banned for a really long time in schools <laughs> here. Pick their battles. Uh, and yeah 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 you could so say that so this is this is why they dub cartoons in french is to <sighs> Because the millennials hate america i don't know no 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 because oh. du- dubbing has been mainstream here for um uh, pretty much as long as there's been a tv you know uh much for a for a really long time um so i i don't i don't know about dubbing i, I i'm not sure why i started to talk about this yeah i thought yeah i was i was like wait where's the skip back to why, why <laughs> we dub things in front? like who 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 hates english is it the boomers is it the millennials is it the government somebody I hates mean, english a lot of millennials use english because it's the lingua franca on the internet and a lot of us mm-hmm. grew up kind of with the internet um but um yeah i ah, i completely forgot where i was trying to go with that this is true i've heard that uh if like if australians go to france as tourists and if the french think they're americans then they're like they hate them but when they find out they're australians they're like oh we we love you like they think initially they're american they dislike you but it turns out you're australian they actually love you is that true I don't think so. I've never heard of this, and this mm. seems fake to me. This seems wrong, um, especially since most American tourists are usually really nice, and uh, they're of all the tourists that come here all the time, they're probably the nicest. The the, the one annoying thing about them is that they're they're really loud. They talk yeah. too loud for no reason. Mm-hmm. But uh, apart from that, they're really they're usually really nice. They tip really well. Uh, which is 
kind of exceptional, but it's uh, recently I learned about the whole tipping problem in America, <laughs> so I understood that a, a bit more. Here it's here you tip if you want to flaunt your wealth. You know, it's a rich people thing that uh, they use them that use this as an ostentatious, you know, display of wealth. Yeah. You know, I'm so rich that I can afford to tip the waiters. Uh, it's not it's not an everyday thing done by, by everyday people. But um, but Americans do it all the time, and they, they give huge tips. But they seem to have a, a really a fondness for the French, at least the tourists that come here. They don't come here by, by mistake, you know. They come here because they want to see uh, the, if it's really <clears> like in Ratatouille. Uh, and uh, and uh, Notre Dame de Paris. Uh, yeah, like being stay. being a francophile is a big thing here. Like moms that that stay at home and drink wine and have have like this shitty art of the Eiffel Tower all over their house, and they just can't <laughs> wait to go back to Paris. Like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's weird because also uh, the 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 wine moms, as we call them, they always drink uh, Chardonnay, which is like the shittest wine that is only drink that is only alcoholics drink here uh, it's like the it's like bottom of the barrel wine but uh, they, they they're all seem, alcoholics that's why they seem to be laboring under the impression that it's somehow refined which it, it could be more wrong and uh, wine in general is uh, not something that is seen as uh, chic or posh or refined here it's more a uh, you know Wine is more a thing for for alcoholics and uh, and people who drink too much. It's not really seen as a, as a display of um, aristocracy or whatever. Um, so it's 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 funny. It's it's always funny when we see foreign people uh, do French thing that is, are considered borderline trashy here, but as as if they were like uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, um, I, I can find the word, but you see what I mean, I suppose. I don't know if that's the case in Australia, but uh, to finish answering your, your question, I don't really remember um, seeing Australian tourists uh, when I worked in... Um, in touristy places yeah, i've yeah. Uh, worked i've worked uh in restaurants for many years so uh, uh i've been in very touristy places i so remember, you would have come across it if it had happened yeah uh yeah 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 i mean i i um i met one recently <coughs> uh but uh he 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 was like um a, a Daryl that I made through the page and say, oh, yeah, I'm, in, I'm in Paris right now. Uh, can we meet? Uh, maybe have beer. So, uh, but um, yeah, I was, uh, I was, um, oh, I remember at a time when I was uh, working on um, a museum that uh, was next to the, um, the D-Day beach thing. And so lots of American tourists there all the time. And um, uh, normally I'm, I was a line cook, but uh, at some point uh, the, the the restaurant was short staffed, and there didn't have enough waiters. So the boss came to me and said, "Can you do some waiting?" And I would say, "I, I wouldn't. Uh, no, really, I'm 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 really bad at it. I never <laughs> trained to be a waiter. You know, I, I know how to cook the food, but you know, bringing stuff to the tables. Not only do I not know how to do it, but I'm a very clumsy person." So uh, this is probably going to end badly. And the boss said, "Ah, oh, it's fine. It's fine. If something uh, happens wrong, uh, it's, it's, it's not. It's not on you. It's on me." And so, of course, I uh, um, in my first hour of uh, waiting on my the only day that I actually waited tables, um, I, I dropped uh, the contents of a whole plate of um, duck in honey sauce on the lap of an American tourist oh, that was so here hungry. to that was here <laughs> for you know. And the guy was delighted. He was like, oh, magnifique, so French, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and, after, and after he- He probably after tipped he, like double for the experience. Exactly, after the, the, the lunch, <laughs> he came to me especially, and he, he gave me a big uh, bill of money, and he said, uh, thank, thank you for giving me the true <laughs> French experience. That was amazing. <laughs> Oh my god! And, uh, yeah, I'm so proud of my country. <laughs> so yeah, usually when you have, because uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of anti-French um, 
sentiment in America, especially uh, since we refused to go uh, on the Iraq War. Uh, and I remember when they, they renamed the French fries the Freedom Fries because everyone because uh, everyone started hating the French uh, at, at this time. Um, because of this uh, awful mentality of if you're not with us, you're against us. Uh, that's it's, you know hateful. But I have I... played a Freedom Fries at the Iowa State Fair. <laughs> True story. <laughs> but yeah, um, the the American tourists that come here usually they already love the country, so they're really nice and they try to behave as as good as possible. Um, the 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 awful the most awful tourists. I ever had was people from Spain. S Spanish people are horrible. I mean, at least the tourists are. And uh, I've never actually been to Spain. And I cannot really remember having uh, um, any Australians. So um, I don't know. Are there, um, you know, I don't know. Um, well, I know that any Australian tourists who go to Bali, which most of them do, are just oh, yeah, drunk and those, obnoxious. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> and it's, it's not a good, yeah, <laughs> it's not a good image of Australia, what they go and do over there. I would not recommend it. Yeah, usually the the image we have of Australia is uh, like a bunch of stuff, uh, a, a bunch of people who have a uh, they're um, a pet alligator or crocodile and uh, you know uh, spiders all over and uh, I wish. drinking beer day and night. <laughs> that that bit's true. Um, yeah. Um, what 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 would you what would you say about um, the the Australia? What do you like the most about australia and what do you like the least about australia um well yeah i mean as i was saying earlier like i just love how i don't know how free people feel like you just it's so laid back it's so just easy going and it's 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 mm. such a nice culture in that regard but uh i dislike hardly how americanized everything is how our culture just seems to bend over backwards for america and it makes mm. sense being one of the closest quote unquote allies or whatever but it's it's kind of annoying that everything is so geared towards what america does instead of forging our own path but no i love australia for its laid-back culture it's really nice yeah yeah it, it really does seem like that i know a lot of people who uh went to um live there because appar apparently there's a lot of job opportunities and uh it's uh a lot of people are uh, uh you know this laid-back culture is really perceptible even from here even by people who don't know a lot about australia uh, you, you can you can feel it in the way that they talk and all that, and um, uh, it's uh, it's a really attra attractive destination for uh, expats. Yes, uh, yeah, guess, definitely, least, definitely. Uh, uh. By the way, you are one, right? You were born in New Zealand, if I remember correctly. I was correctly. absolutely. I'm half Kiwi, half English, and made my way over here when I was the ripe old age oh. of six. So, yeah, not truly Australian, but raised here essentially. So definitely. Definitely ingrained with the culture. Oh, you, your parents moved to Australia when you were little? Yeah, I mean, funnily enough, four job opportunities, so I'm sure that's true enough for a lot of people that come here. Um, but I would still consider myself Kiwi through and through. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> what was that? Was that a <laughs> judgmental? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like you're uh you're kind of kind of cheating on australia here uh, oh, definitely i mean you live, you live in australia <laughs> but like you would i mean what kind of i don't know what kind of rivalry would would new zealand and australia have against each other where australia, like australia new zealand really are tight I, they're super tight uh, like i mean the anzacs at war and stuff like australia and new zealand are real tight but when it comes to sport they're like blood rivals like you know oh, the uh, the blood okay. which is the wallabies the australian rugby union team and the all blacks obviously like uh the best team in the world um <laughs> uh you know it's 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 a great rivalry and there's a lot of banter it's great it's fun okay so you would be you would be at an australian rugby game just like just just openly flagrantly oh, definitely. supporting all all new way, zealand yeah. and 100%. like you might you might get in a fist fight in the parking lot or something not quite but a lot of other no. people would have <laughs> i would just be sitting back and watching it's just free entertainment but no definitely I mean, yeah i guess proud if you of get being, too very late huh i mean there's only four million kiwis in the world so it's a nice small club to be a part of that is pretty cool yeah, like if you get two laid back cultures together, having a sports rivalry, it's probably going to be a pretty laid back yeah, sports absolutely. rivalry. And yeah, I mean, New Zealand will probably find it even more laid back than Australia. Everything's just a joke. It's all just lighthearted and fun. It's a great way have to you be. Been to, have you been to any of the places where the Lord of the Rings was shot? 
Um, yeah, no, I actually went to Hobbiton, the, yeah, the little Hobbit holes and stuff, and it was nice. It kind of sucked when seeing that, like, when the door opens, it's just, like, one square metre of a room, and it's, I mean, obviously, it's <laughs> not what it shows in the movies, but it was cool regardless. I liked it. Yeah, you, you were hoping that the whole interior sets were just going to, yeah, like, be yeah, it behind been cool. all the doors. It was, like, more, but, uh, no, it's a rite of passage, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, if you were if you were a Lord of the Rings um, species, what would you be? You know, I have a huge man crush on Aragorn, so I would just be up in his grill no matter what species I was. <laughs> He's such a babe. Oh my god, sorry. <laughs> That's why I was wanting the breast implants. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah, um, we, yeah. Got hot topics on breast implants. <laughs> Have you seen the show Flight of the Concords? Absolutely. Absolutely. How accurate would you say it portrays New Zealander culture? Uh, very. <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> it's perfect. It's the nice. perfect humor. Like, I love British humor, like uh, Monty Python and stuff, but Flight of the Concords is New Zealand humor and culture to a T. It is on point. So, yeah, if you ever wanted a little bit of insight into New Zealand culture, watch Flight of the Concords. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great show. I love it. Um, and uh, it's uh, it's even better. It's even better now that I, I know that it's uh, really accurate. Yes, yeah, and literally. <laughs> like all those, those stupid jokes and just whatever they do and just lack of knowledge about the world. That's that's New Zealand. So, Justin, what should we talk about when he's gone? <laughs> all the important things. <laughs> uh, what are the important things anyway? I've got nothing. <laughs> I should have prepared a script or something. I'm sure he's got little dot points written down in front of him, but I do not. I don't. I don't either. I just, I'm just kind of winging it. Do you yeah. have a Facebook page? I do. Yeah. I'm well, not a page. No, I have a Facebook profile. Ah, <laughs> I'm just, point. I'm just a regular fan. I just, I just like harass Nelson enough until he gave me a job. And that's how I got, <laughs> yeah, I got a job. Yeah. When he was like, Hey, box. there's someone else joining us. I was like, Oh, who? And he's like, Oh yeah, just a fan. I was like, cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa, that. Lisa, Lisa, who's just Lisa and does, does nothing to <laughs> contribute significantly on the internet. So then, that's yeah, good. I'm I mean, just one of those. I'm just one of those people out there cl clicking all the reactions and. Uh, no, that's what we sharing. need. That's that's yeah. what I thrive on. So I'm glad that <laughs> you're part of that. Yeah, I'm just part of the meme fan public. I wouldn't be anything without people like you. So I mean, not that I'm anything special, regardless, but I would be especially nothing without that validation from strangers. Yeah, for sure. It's it's mutual. I would be nothing without uh sharing sharing people your content. Who don't upon. And <laughs> Well, no, your your content um, lends a personality to me because I would have no personality of my own if it weren't for meme page <laughs> creators. <laughs> no, all my friends think that I'm, I actually have a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Um, How long were you lurking for then, Nelson? Uh, we said some pretty sensitive things. Uh, no, no, I just um, I just arrived. Um, sure. <laughs> uh, I I was thinking about the the conversation, and I realized that we went on a lot of tangents, and I forgot to ask one of the classic questions of this show, uh, which is, uh, what is a meme that you really hate? Um, I really hated the how about that when that was a thing. That was just so. <laughs> Dumb. Yeah. It was just one of those things where you're like, this person shouldn't have e fame, or you know, <laughs> the generations yeah. around the world should not be idolizing this. I hated that with a passion. Yeah, the the memes that come from TV shows are usually pretty bad. I mean, not fiction TV shows, but uh, you know, this uh, reality TV. I, yeah. I guess it. I guess it is. I never understood what Doctor Phil is. I just know he's a uh, he's not a Hasidic. Uh, hillbilly with a snout full of honeybees. Hasidic oh. hillbilly? Is that what you said? With a snout full of honeybees? What does that even mean? Yeah. What? Uh, <laughs> I have no. never heard that phrase in my uh, life. It, and I would have happily died never having heard it. Ha Hasidic is a, is a branch Hasidic of Judaism. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, what? With a snout full of It's a... Uh, Please explain. Yes, sure. Uh, it's uh, it's a meme that from a, from a long time ago, I, I think about ten years. Uh, so there's this guy, Doctor Phil, who has this show on TV, and um, you know there um, uh, 
there are closed captions for people who are hard of hearing and um, someday I think the, the guy who made the captions was getting fired and so he started putting random shit in the captions instead of <laughs> you know accurately uh, reproducing the words uh, that uh, Dr. Phil was saying and that was one of the phrases that made the, the thing uh, blow up on 4chan is that uh, Dr. Phil said whatever and uh, the caption read uh, I end some Hasidic hillbilly with a snout full of honeybees <laughs> What a good way well, to go I, out. Is, is Dr. Phil Jewish? I'm like looking this up right now. I, I don't know, but that, you know, there was a lot of weird captions from that for, uh, for, for all, all the episode. And, uh, cause, cause if he was Jewish, that would definitely be a Hasidic hillbilly right there. Cause he's very hillbilly. With a snout uh, full of honeybees. Least. Apparently so. <laughs> I, I guess, I guess so. Cause he, he's kind of, he's kind of like, uh, I don't know. He he kind of flips out on people and he's sort of mean to them. And like, a, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some tough love right here and tell you straight how it really is. You know, I would call him a bottom of... feeder. You know, like the bottom feeding fish <laughs> that just like feeds yes. off just the stupidest, worst shit. Yeah. Like that's what that is. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, there was a lot of memes uh, around that time that came from uh, really stupid TV shows. I remember the the Ken Bone meme. I never found oh, that yeah. funny. No, no, no. You know, remember Ken Bone, who was a guy who was on a, a political debate with uh, Trump and Hillary Clinton, and he was this guy with a red uh, sweater um, yeah. and um, uh, a mustache, and his name was Ken Bone, and he had a, a question about Hillary Clinton's tax policy, and uh, he became like a uh, internet famous. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like uh, instantly, and um, like I didn't see the the fun in that. I didn't find it funny, but yeah, there, there was a lot of uh, just just people doing nothing special, like yeah, damn, damn yeah. Daniel, uh, or uh, the guy who put salt on on his grill stuff. Um, th that that was kind of a dark time for memes. Uh, Twenty sixteen, it was Absolutely. really dark time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad really the, uh, I'm yeah. glad the era of like swag and YOLO only lasted like two to three years before it saw its <laughs> death. Because if that had gone on yeah. any longer, oof. I mean, yeah, I mean, it still gave us one of the best song lyrics of all time, which is <laughs> "Swag, swag, swag on you, chilling by the fire while we're eating fondue." That's true. Um, that is a lyrical genius. You're that, right. That is. That is. Yeah. 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 A lot of people are shitting on Justin Bieber, but he has some gold. In his lyrics, really. I'm not sure he even um, wrote that, but he did sing it <laughs> yeah, with Gusto. Yeah, totally didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, collect, the collection of people that that culminates in Justin Bieber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the behind the scenes. Yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the three, three Redditors in a trench coat. 